Hello everybody, we're back with another match of R6 with an ECC stream for week three. I'm Treasure, and today I'm joined by a fresh new face for our NECC streams, Power of the Storm. How are you doing today? I'm doing very good. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, so this uh, match that we've got here for tonight, finishing out the night, uh, is going to be the week three, as I said. So we've started to get into the bulk of the season. People are starting to draw apart from each other in the rankings. And this is one of those cases. Bowling Green State University is sitting on zero and two so far. And the UCF Knights are feeling very comfortable at the beginning of their season, standing on a 2-0 record. Definitely BGS, you are the underdog going into this. 2-0 and for UCF Knights is definitely a scoreline that you really want to keep going into this, make that a 3-0. And, and BGSU, they're looking to see if they can kind of climb their way back, get their win on the board. It's definitely just based upon the scorelines that we see. It's going to be a challenge, of course, but I believe that it is possible at the very least we can have a very good game for every one today as both these teams as we get further and further into the weeks are going to be as competitive as possible to make sure that they get in if they can yeah we can even get a little deeper dive here checking out who's going to be on the rosters for tonight playing in the match all right starting off with bgsu we've got butters shaggy bandrews and rock and coffee a pretty good spread here as far as what they're actually doing in school and how long they've been over there at bowling green state university it's always nice to see that these players, you know, they, they like doing seeds, they like competing in it, and they have that as we'd like to do, but at the same time, they're also focusing on things that they can, you know, have a more guaranteed future in, because seeds, you know, it can be a bit up and down. Sometimes you can't you make it as a career, not everyone can, and having something in your back pocket, like so being a software engineer or a business analytics, for example, is always helpful to have, especially when you're going in to, you know, college and you're just trying to get where you can in the world yeah and these are a lot of these same things that we're used to seeing on a lot of rosters i mean i think we'll probably see a lot of the same over at ucf see what the knights are up to and see who's going to be showing up today we've got try caleb snake and java and maui so uh, <laughs> they, they like to mix it up on me i was rehearsing their names earlier before too because none of them are that phonetic but they're actually pretty straightforward for the most part sorry for stumbling over a couple of them but these guys too and some uh pretty similar stuff the computer science is a, a perennial favorite across all of our esports players this makes sense you know you're, you're with a computer all day doing computer science you know you want to go play some games i feel like that's a kind of a thing that a lot of uh, especially younger gamers nowadays are heading into just doing you know more computer oriented stuff they grew up with it and, you know just kind of natural for them to head towards that career path in particular but still we are seeing you know a bit of a spread here mathematics it things that we haven't we didn't see in the previous two for example before so definitely shows you know a wide range of people like to play siege and you know continue jobs towards the future yeah, we've got a map spread for tonight as well, so we can get a look at what everyone's been thinking getting into this match. we got kind of a fun one, I'd say, Power, right? I would certainly agree, yeah. We are going to see Oregon, which is called by Borgen by some. I personally like it as, as, I'm a big Oregon as fan. being a... Yeah, I like it as a first map, you know? Cause it's just like a map that you get that is very basic. A lot of teams have played it a million times. They probably scrimmed it earlier today. And we get to just see how well they perform in an environment where surprises aren't really going to be a factor in terms of the map. And the other two maps are ones that, you know, can be a lot more chaotic. And we really get to see, especially on a map like Border, how well they're able to adapt to what the map can sometimes throw at them and what the unique setups that the teams can bring. Yeah, that does have an interesting aspect to it. Our home team Bowling Green State University was the ones to opt for Oregon and our little bit more of a wrench in the plans map border opted for by UCF Knights. They came to the common consensus for our final map. If we do get there, our map three beyond Skyscraper, which is a little more untested even. So probably one of the farthest from Oregon as far as how much these teams are scrimming on there. maps personally i absolutely love seeing that map in all forms of play but without further ado we are going to get straight into the bands right now starting out you can off the bands. they're gonna open things up with a jackal band yeah so oregon collegiate uh rainbow six i don't expect to see anything crazy here the jackal kind of sets the tone at the beginning of this match as well the KB is a little bit more off right 
I would say sort of, but after what we saw in SI that obviously just happened and because of what's been happening over the seasons, some operators are getting nerfed. Doka has slowly risen up as being an operator that has a lot of value she brings to the team. And so while in the past, I would say very surprising ban, I'm actually not too surprised to see it be banned here. Yeah, Mira though, I think we really fall back into form just as well. Her power down in the basement, watching over into bunker, basically unparalleled. Aruni is another power pick operator. I don't know if I'd really consider her one that makes or breaks a defense, but she adds a lot of value both in the top floor and basement objectives, which are always the most popular on Oregon. One thing it is worth pointing out is the operators that weren't banned. We are going to see potentially a Kaid being brought out, a potentially an Azami being brought out as well, or of course a Valkyrie, which adds so much more utility to the team. Of course, we're seeing none of those operators I just mentioned Defender because why would we? Bombs. But the opportunity for them to be on the board could be very, very useful for either of these two teams as the game plays out. And I kind of agree that I don't entirely think that Aruni is the best band. Maybe it was a targeted one. It's a bit difficult to say. Yeah, that does give me the inkling of that. It might be one of those things where UCF might just scrim without Aruni. They might see that value coming for other people and just not bother running Aruni strats going. We can put a wrench in everyone else's plans if we just keep Aruni off there. A lot of teams kind of don't use her as like a carry thing. It's not what the strat is built on, but they rely on that and kind of crutch on how much she's able to bring. The team or three gates can deal with a lot of throwables. They basically act as a one-time ADS until reset and as entry denial 50 damage on trying to get through a doorway a lot of times you just can't make that trade especially as the rounds get really deep into the last few seconds of the round this looking like a pretty aggressive start from bgs you already taking a lot of ground i'm a little worried that there might not be drone presence ahead of these phases though we are going to be seeing a basement hold coming out from UCF to start things off. Not too surprising, it is one of the most popular sites, not only on this map in particular, but in the game. But one thing I do want to draw your attention to, and everyone watching, is going to be the Grim being bought out by Bandrews, an operator that you don't see be brought hardly at all, as he doesn't bring a whole lot to the table. But we're seeing them being run in the very first round on this map. Yes, yeah, so it's going to help to root out some of the defenders, but right now, that might not actually come out as intended. UCF is playing really close to the chest, not playing very far out with their defenders, except for our warden that we're seeing right now pushing up to try and deal with the drone. He has been spotted, and the communication should go out. Those shotgun holes are a total distraction, and it's going to pay off. Butters takes the kill on the stairs. Amazing opening kill starting things out. That is a Nook, another operator that wasn't banned as a result of the bans we saw. And Nook, another operator that was banned a lot of SI and has been growing a lot more in popularity, especially as things go on. Having the ability to lurk around the map very effectively, having a very good gun, having nades as well, makes her extremely deadly and very difficult to take care of a lot of the time. And we saw completely why that is the case there with Butters getting an amazing opening pick to start things out for their team. The attack has started to push deeper into objective now. Yeah, location is known, but that swarm... Oh, okay, just is able to grab enough attention for Bandrews to get the kill over. Taken out uh, Java as the defense finally finds a save back. Coffee has been taken off the board. And the push is coming in now from BGS. You main advantages is firmly in their favor right now, but they have seen the stall just a little bit as we do have the Goyo canisters are kind of slowing down that push coming in from that laundry side, but it's a nade from Butters to open things up once again. But it looks like the Jaeger isn't going to let things go down without a fight as they get two in Freezer and they're looking for a third. Oh, prowling around. This could be an absolute stand-up play from Mahedrian already. Oh my god, making huge impact for the team. Four kills, not quite getting that one before getting shut down by Enrock. is now a 1v1 as Maori is hoping to push up. Has the uh, UCS able to throw some big shotgun slugs down the hallway. They do so much damage on chest and leg shots. And Enrock is already so hurt, so it's going to need to be a headshot or bringing in the close quarters to try and catch Maui off guard. Has the diffuser and is just going to have to make a play now that we're hitting zero seconds. He can't get off of it and Maui is just going to shut him down there. The hit fire, all he needs, doesn't even need to be a headshot. 
amazing work there from the egg or being played by Mahi to be able to effectively shut down the push coming in from inside of Freezer and completely take the round in favor. It was amazing work from Maui to be able to clutch that out, play that passively, and just wait for the timer to run out and then pick up the kill on the end. But still, a lot of credit has to be given to Mahi for what he did and how effectively he was able to win those gunfights. Wasn't able to get all of them, unfortunately. That would have been very impressive if he was able to. But 3K still a 3K, and UCF take that round. Maybe a bit closer than they were hoping, but a win is a win nonetheless. Yeah, and they get to round this out and moving over to their other favorite objective on the second floor. We're not seeing anything crazy right off the bat. They are getting to make use of the Valkyrie that we mentioned earlier. Character that has gone unbanned this map. And so hopefully, Jab will be able to find lots of value with those black eyes that he can place just about anywhere he wants. It certainly does make things very interesting when it comes to actually attacking because... The versatility of the evil lies means that at anywhere in time you could be on cam and they could know exactly what you're doing. Of course, it does mean there is one player who is not going to be shooting if all players are alive on the side of UCF. But still, the potential is absolutely huge. And that's why we see her be not only banned so much, but also brought so much to the table. And it's a bit difficult to tell as casters the value that the Valkyrie is getting, uh, unless there's like a lot of pings coming through, if we're seeing through the eyes of the evil eye, for example. But even still, you can just tell when you watch an attacking team get utterly red that a evil eye, or excuse me, a black eye is doing <laughs> a ton of work in being able to actually stop the attacking push. Ooh, that's a huge cutoff. BGSU is once again taking a lot of real estate downstairs really quickly. So Caleb is having to throw away most of his life bar, just trying to rotate back in his sight. He hasn't decided exactly where he wants to be on the roam. And now he's been kind of caught out. The defenders, ooh, yeah, droned out downstairs. Tries in a really rough spot. He's been trying to play downstairs for the C4. You can see there was five explosives brought by the UCF defense, but that one is going to be out. And that's one of the most impactful ones too, one of the C4s. We're also going to see Maverick going down. Not sure. Maybe it was C4 toss down them. But we didn't exactly see it. It's a bit difficult to tell. But in any case... Now, Java still got C4. I think he might have fallen off the rafters. Definitely could be the case. Yeah, which is not the greatest way to go. But it looks like that there might be someone that can rotate over. Maybe. No, they seem to be taking fights. And with Enerok going down as well, it looks like that they might just let Coffee bleed. Nope, they do end up getting the pick. I'm fortunate there's someone that's sneaking up that we didn't see. So 4v4 now. But again, a lot of health gone. Not the great situation to be in. Ooh, Javar, other coffee player on the other side, taking a lot of damage as well. We're not going to have a lot more life in these uh, thematic names. Uh, Maui also starting to take fight, seeing that drone and getting it in the end, but there's no immediate follow-up. He's got to hold that close and tight, but Shaggy sneaks in between those semi-automatic fire shots. Right now, the attack is looking a little bit limited. They're coming up white stairs. They don't have the attic presence that they were really hoping for. And they're going to rely on some of that vertical pressure. But in the last minute, I'm not sure if that's going to be enough. We do have a decent bit of utility still left on the board. Those Malusi webs are going to be able to give intel to the attackers, to the defenders, excuse me, as to where exactly the attackers are coming from. And some shots are going through. It doesn't look like the Mahai. There we no go. Way. It doesn't look like Mahai sees, but they do end up getting the headshot kill, bringing these to 3v3. There's now 30 seconds, but not a lot of time left. The web webs are getting it away. The prone is coming out now. That is one of them going down. But things are looking now desperate. 2v2. It, it's anyone's round. There's the shutdown on him, Hadrian, the power player Ooh. all through this, but Java's been set up perfectly by his teammates, high and around the corner, and the execution just doesn't get to do anything for the attackers. It's just been so stifled at every moment of the round. It came down to that 2v2 in the dying seconds, but there's still time on the clock. The defense had a pretty comfortable hold over their objective, I think, really controlling the round. Even with man advantage being in favor of BGSU, they couldn't really get anything done, which is unfortunate to see. And while it is worth pointing out those were the two primary sites, and now BGSU are going to be able to attack a tertiary site, this time Kitchen and Needing. Still, the way that 
even though they had man advantage, even though it looked like they may have been able to get something going there, the way it got shut down by just the lack of the ability to deal with the utility that UCF had on the board, makes me a little bit worried, especially for this take, that they might suffer a bit when it comes to them actually getting into the site and getting the diffuser down unless they go for a full rush. But even then, I would say there are definitely better ways of going about it to actually effectively get in and take things. It might just come down to them just having a better strategy in the end. Mm -hmm. So, going into our round three now, we've made that rotation of our really common to see objectives, basement and second floor in the dormitories, but now our kitchen site and our defenders have opted for kitchen uh, meeting, which is interesting in that it forces a lot more vertical play. It's now very important to get a hold of attic and by extension, master bedroom. That's why we're going to see attackers going right up here immediately. Yep, they want to close in on the area above kitchen in dormitories and they want to get attic control that way they can take the hatch in meeting hall so this actually i think is pretty good for the attackers bgsu has showed quite a bit of affinity for vertical play and taking these same key gunfight areas so i'm pretty hopeful for them finding a round in this one of course you see we're not going to give it up we do see mahi currently playing up here with the oryx trying to see if they can stall a little bit as well but it's not going to be them that gets the first pick maui does end up getting the kill with a slug shoddy of all things playing on that in the name unfortunately but they are going to be getting that first pick and well with the wall being open now the swing is going to be coming through here and they are going to be able to get those players on the top floor so that it did come through but they did lose at least one person and they saw it about a minute not the greatest hold ever but it is definitely something that could potentially snowball later in the round yeah, Mahi, already a standout player for UCF, literally got himself pinned in a corner by pushing up on the exothermic charge. His teammates aren't able to take down Butters as he enters. That was a great peak hole to have, but three armor on fuse, just the 9mm rounds out of an MP5 aren't able to do too much into his feet. Gotta shut down those fuse charges before they destroy everything in objective. Fuse putting in a lot of work as to clearing out areas, but they're not clearing them out all too well. They're not really getting all of the players to be flushed out. It did sort of work, and they did end up getting a kill there. Shaggy opening things up for them, but still 4v2, a minute left remaining. There's still enough time for them to stall out here, but some damage onto Mal. We and not the greatest gun in the hands of Caleb. It isn't the best situation for them to be in. They do have full sight control, and it looks like Coffee's going to be able to just walk in and get the diffuser down. The players will try to use yet. Not too much to do about it, except just trying to fire back and maybe get something done here. Yeah, and at these ranges, you're really suffering for having uh, such a low range. Yeah, some machine gun like that plant very comfortably going down from coffee at this point and bgsu has all but won the round with the player watching up above coffee takes the kill on the long fire caleb is the only player left to try and make this happen 1v4 yep coffee taking another one add into that cost rating as he gets the defuse and defends it perfectly that's as i suspected bowling green state university finally get to have their say because that's exactly the round they wanted to see a round win on the board is ever so important. We guarantee that at the very least, they're going to try to make things competitive. Of course, they if they want to actually take this half and even split, they're going to need to win one of these primary sites, either on this lawn, your supply room hole that we're seeing right now, or they're going to need to win it if the defenders do take this back upstairs. And I hope that they'll be able to learn from their mistakes in the previous rounds and effectively take this. But unfortunately... There's not too much we have to go off of. They were able to effectively take the top floor and then get that tertiary site down, which is impressive. But again, it is a tertiary site. That is something we need to worry about. And UCF, they already know how to hold this. And while that round was decently close in the end, a 1v1, still, they lost all of their ones to one player, Mahi, just completely owning them. That's something you cannot let happen, especially when you're trying to take the half and make it even. 10 seconds remaining. Interesting switch to Amaru um, in these last couple seconds after seeing Basement. Not something you're commonly going to experience, so Butters is probably going to be uh, clearing out the top floor in anticipation of a lot more roamers. If UCF defends like they did the first round when they went to Basement, it's probably not going to give them a lot of value to be able to rotate very quickly, and if anything else, just would be uh, making up for some mistakes in what flanks each players are going in uh he's supporting a blitz charge actually though through bunker 
not immediately not the same blitz rush that we may be uh so familiar with on online matchmaking Andrews does need to have some support in order to make this thing work he has made himself a target right off the bat yeah he's been seen in that goyo canister is going to blow up something that really helps with dealing with shield operators we are going to see that flores like you mentioned getting a lot of value there and it's going to mean that effectively blitz can push in and pressure any of them out if they do leave that wall and reinforce my assumption is that it is going to get reinforced fortunately don't see it so far We're current and more focus on butters who's current just trying to pressure out pillar although push probably gonna be coming in right now as we do see the lion skins coming out Andrews taking a bit of damage and butters gonna open things up those are gonna be flying back and forth no way oh and the shoddy in the back unfortunate for them it's just going to completely shut things down and absolutely amazing push yeah they did not back up all the way they let the blitz rush in and that cost them in the end they lose that round pretty handily bgsu tying things up and looking to make this series as competitive as possible well there we go they've proved it to us they can do it they don't need it to be dining the off objective for ucf they can do it on ucf's favorite choice uh, basement as soon as we go back to it banjo's go at least eyeing another blitz especially in anticipation anticipation of another basement hold but we're going back to second floor from ucf uh i have to note if uh if we're being a little picky about last round for the defense one operator from bgsu ever even touched objective do you know what that says to me is that everyone moved towards all the lights and flashing action and just stared at bunker where they knew the blitz was so every single player in ucf was busy trying to deal with a blitz and that allowed just the rest of the team to tear through five kills in like 10 seconds altogether there was all the kills happened at the same time no one was holding power angles to make sure that they had their back watched in case someone lost a gunfight everyone was just watching the same angles Back upstairs once again. We're seeing a bit of an adaptation of Rook coming out. Operator, you don't see all too off in here. Does give you more HP and does make sure you go you do go down but not out. But I feel like there are just more operators that actively do more, and you're taking a bit of a like a risk of like you can be played with aggressively. That's about what I can see. If you're seeing a roaming dock or excuse me, a roaming rook, that's that's really what I like to see Rook being played here. But doesn't look like we're going to be seeing all that too much. A frost is being brought out as well, which can be valuable if they do want to push into the windows. In particular, big window is this place where we do see site some site executes come from. I don't entirely know if that's where it's going to have, but it could potentially end up shutting down the armoru that's back on the board for butters once again. But even still, I feel like that some of these operator choices, they're not, they're not the adjustments I would make, but we'll have to see if they do end up getting any value or if unfortunately they are countered by the push coming in from BGSU. Yeah, you noted the Rook pick specifically. He has no, he's not beholden to anyone. He can play wherever he wants because he doesn't really give any active utility other than being the best operator with a gun. So instead we've taken the long angle on Attic. I would love to see Java like watching the holes that Maverick's actually gonna make those peak holes because he wins those fights with the two times scopes. It makes it, the head is just so much bigger, especially at this range to be really easy. He's seeded some ground now in Attic because he doesn't have any, Thing really to keep adding value to the defense there is a frost match so uh if there is some overzealous pushing up then that could net some value right off the bat yeah blinds going off and barely barely banjers actually gets over the frost mat that is still there counting his blessings banjers moves in on the back of that flash totally destroying Mahidrin. He doesn't even get a chance to say anything despite being on Wamai. Two kills back to back by Caleb. He's taken down by Butters though, and it comes out in favor of the offenders. Taken it by Storm through Attic. We unfortunately did not have time to mention Ying, but they were brought out and used to their full effectiveness for that attack from BGSU. Absolutely dominating the top four hold that UCF had. They just weren't really able to do anything. We did see a Warden come out at one point in the previous round, I believe but they weren't really able to do all too much there wasn't a ying on the board now they bring it of course they almost had to bring the warden and ying absolutely tears through all of the players on the side of ucf and well ucf they're like eh, we just lost three in a row probably gonna want to take a timeout which is definitely very respectable it means they won't have it for later which can potentially be dane Jurist, but teams typically do win their next round after a timeout that's something that we see in most levels of play it isn't a guaranteed thing like it is at the highest level of play but 
usually getting a brief moment to kind of talk things over and be like, hey, what are we doing wrong? What were we doing right that allowed us to be so successful in the earlier rounds? And how can we replicate that? It'd be very valuable to these teams. Yeah, and that's something that some teams don't really use as liberally when they're given the option is to call these timeouts. And when you have three pretty close rounds, go in your favor. Like, that's definitely good. And then two that you just, it feels like you're AFK for. Like, not as far as gun skill thing, but they were just so out positioned on both the basement and second floor that the execution happened before defenders could get a single bullet in either time. And here we're seeing an immediate adaptation, obviously, back down the base. And once again, we're seeing Warden being brought out. And I feel like we're probably going to be seeing a lot more Warden, just because they sh showed BGSU how powerful they can be when it comes to these Ying pushes. That it would almost be foolish for UCF to not bring a Warden. Just in case, you know, because if that happens and you have a Warden, there's a decent chance that you're going to be able to stop that push by just swinging that Ying and killing her before she even knows what's coming. But if you don't bring it, a lot higher of opportunity there's going to Ying rush you again, and then it feels like you're just at such a huge disadvantage when actually comes to attacking it. So, again, I, it sucks that that's kind of how it is, like the game of rock, paper, scissors, in that you're forced to kind of bring Warden when you can't really six pick, but it's the nature of the game, sometimes what do you have to do? No more ace for the, uh, uh, or Flores for the attackers, I'm sorry. Uh, which means that there's not going to be nearly as viable to push in through Bunker. But BGSU is going back with this tried and true very quick push, especially over from Shower side. Yeah, and with Intel to boot, they're going to clear this top floor pretty quickly. Since once again, UCF is showing uh, a lot closer to objective. They're not spending a lot of time upstairs trying to harry during this clear phase, which is going to be really productive for Coffee over there on Habana. He can open up a lot of hatches with all of those pellets so we'll see what they end up doing with that which ones they opt for maybe two maybe three uh and we'll see if they make use out of all of that opp opportunity we are seeing grim being brought out once again they've brought grim two rounds in a row almost brought up for the third round unfortunately that did not happen a uh, quick trade coming out here that is going to be the nook and the bandit off the board looks like they already placed their batteries though so not anything they need to really worry about unfortunately only, but a kill is a kill uh, for both sides nonetheless are going to be definitely happy that that went in the way that it did with the quick trades coming on and no one was able to really back out too too quickly but still it does mean that they you know are a little bit more cautious they have to worry a bit more about someone maybe being on the roam and it looks like they've kind of you know stalled out just a little bit here not really pushing in as aggressively as they did previously but they are starting to push downstairs now so that does make sense yeah, open up these hatches is what they want to be getting up to while they just hold angles and make sure that there's no flanks potentially coming out. With both the staircases, or all three of the staircases, now watched by the offense, they can really put their sights forward and start coordinating to find some picks. That's what they need from here. Four to four, they can't really make much happen until they've taken the head off of one of these defenders. But once again playing really close to site shaggy knows that there's a player here not too long ago but try has peeled off all the way to his deployable shield where he can bunker down and wait for the offense to have to make the first move Ooh, some quick shots coming up from java there trying to pick off bandrews unfortunately it will not happen we're seeing the bees come out here again it's just java just some quick shots just trying to find some picks it does not happen and though as coffee is going to be able to pick up Maui now, the Jaeger going down now, the gun off the board at the very least, and we're seeing the fire separating the two players. Coffee is now kind of stuck here playing up against this hard wall, trying to peek in and maybe get some ballast. You Thankfully, Butters is there to join them as they drop down to the Eve box. And again, just more pressure coming out. Those Goyo canisters, though, are making them so difficult. They're stalling out the attack so heavily, and now we're only down to 15 seconds left. Yeah, all three attackers on the basement side. Oh, the Shaggy actually pulling up another flank, but he is shut down. Butters lands another grenade kill on Coffee, picking up his second kill on the round. Leaves Tri stuck. No shield left to hide behind, and he's actually rotated away from the objective. He's looking to flank. Yeah, draws some fire, even finds the down. He finishes it off, but the diffuser has gone on while he's had to take that fight. He hears those gunshots. He's got a much more fast-firing gun to deal with on the other side, though. But Coffee, welcome... Picking up a 3k and plant on the round. Looking great once again with his Type 89. I do indeed love my Habana. An, ama an amazing gun. You know, the recoil can be a little bit... Uh, but, you know, if you're able to control that, and you're totally golden. Don't worry about it. But, remember, you said at the beginning that we were worried that 
you know, BGSU were looking a little bit, you know, a little bit shaky, maybe not going to be able to take that half as efficiently as they want, not going to be able to get the even split. And they went above and beyond. Their adjustments were huge, and they managed to take the half 4 2 on attack, rather, on a map that is typically defender sided. Amazing, amazing work from BGSU to clean things up. And also, with the timeout being called from UCF, they don't have it in pocket now. And BGSU, if things ever get a little bit hairy, they saw the timeout they can rely on if they so choose, or they can just keep trying to wing it and see how it goes. It worked out well for them the first time. Yeah, that's kind of a flex right there for Bowling Green State to take the round right after the timeout and on both of the favorite objectives for UCF and the generally stronger ones on this map to boot. A pretty different defender lineup, actually just about as different as you can get. That is being brought out now by BGSU. We got Solus, we've got Echo, we've got Thunderbird, and we've got Oryx. There's only one like really common operator pick here, and I really hope to see what they'll do with Solus, a really strong operator able to find the gadgets of the attackers through walls. Lots of really good operators being brought to the board. They don't sell too often because they're at slightly more niche. Obviously, Echo, after the nerf that they got a while back, the man so that way they can't really play as effectively because the drones that they have no longer go invisible do make things you know, not as good. And then, well, of course, Thunderbird is kind of an operator where it's like, if you don't get damaged, she's not really all too valuable, right? But you're going to get damaged. Or they have an Oryx on the board as well who can just, you know, Kool-Aid man through everything. So certainly not something that they're particularly going to be able to not make use of, I suppose. A little double negative there for you. But <laughs> I really like this Osa. She's been getting a oh lot of God. play recently in high competitive. We're seeing the power coming out. Here, able to open these up, getting one kill on a person droning, getting even more damage to someone pushing in, just being able to know where the enemy is coming from or being able to have a general idea of them from a long range. Surprisingly enough, it feels like they tried to make Pulse 2, but then gave her a way better gun, and it's kind of just spelled out of control a little bit. Yeah, it's really strong to have. Oh my Woo. god. Yeah, going back to the operator picks, everything on the defense is based around taking picks, taking the players off of the team, and not really dealing with utility. And this is paying off right off the bat with some really confident plays. I mean, we look at Butters, 8-2, and two, loses these first two rounds, and then comes out like a... As a bat out of heck with that eight and two record. Yeah, uh, and rock gets a little bit too aggressive though uh, but one player lost at this point and UCF is looking a lot worse for where they haven't been able to get their utility where they want it Caleb has opened up attic just like he was expecting but try is nowhere close to getting into master He's gonna pick up a second kill though, and that is what they need to keep in the game He's checking to see if butters is still in the vicinity at all spoiler alert He's not and that nade isn't going to net anything, but the fear is there and as you say that, Butters actually rotates back into Armory, not expecting it. It looks like they're going to try to get the pickup here, and they don't. They drop oh down, God. though. There was someone just outside. They're going to do another run out. What, they're just, what, what, what was happening? Okay, they get tagged, <laughs> and they do end up going down. Maui with a triple kill. No. Try will steal the potential ace from them in the meantime of picking up Shaggy. But now it's down to a 1v3. This looked like it was going so heavily in BGSU's favor, but they got cocky. They got arrogant. And now it's up to Coffee, the top frag inside of BGSU, try to close things out. Not impossible to do, but they won't do it in the end as Caleb walks in, even with the beeper, not too much that can be done. They pick up the kill and they pick up a round and stop the 4-0 that was happening from BGSU. <laughs> yeah, up. Uh that's crazy to see team go down two rounds uh feeling a little pain and then just five rounds later they're losing a round off of overextending on just feeling so good off of picking up kills but you can't do that as a team leaving two players out there and rock and butters running around looking for kills using your wall hacks and your rima dash to sprint around with the smgs if you lose them, that's okay, but no one else should be playing their lives so aggressively. Otherwise, you're going to drop down to that 1v3 and you go, where did the round go? So they're going to take another opportunity, run this one back. Same comp, except the Thunderbird getting traded out for Jaeger. That's going to promote a little bit more cohesion among the team and make it a little easier to hold backwards. I'm, I think maybe this was the situation where all the defenders went, there's not much to play off of in sight. So if I'm going to be safe, I have to kill someone before they start pushing me. And so maybe Jaeger will give a little bit more uh, safety to the defenders so that they don't feel the need to push out. 
We are seeing an interesting switch up here. Something we haven't seen. We did see a shield operator from BGSU on their attack, but that was a blitz. And that's a totally different vibe from the Monty that we're seeing Mahi bring out this time around. And a uh, uh, Fragger that is currently the top frag for UCF. They're up instead to put them on the Monty, which is a bit interesting. Typically, you see more of a hard support going on there, or a flex player going down that as well, but maybe Monty is the flex, and I haven't seen too much of them, unfortunately, can't really say, but in any case, this Monty is going to make things interesting. Do you see Monty for, like, a basement take? Not really a top floor take, because getting c fort from below is something that can happen very easily. Ooh, a lot of pressure on Bandries. He takes one, but there's another player coming right in. He thought that he had the kill there if there was going to be a player, but just wasn't enough bullets. So Java's able to get through, take the kill, and take the revenge. Only like 50 damage on his body to pay for it. So he's going to be able to get a little bit more room for his team. He doesn't know. He might suspect that there is an Oryx down below coming around for the flank. And yeah, that's going to be a big reason for taking this operator in the first place. Dealing with all those flanks, Nomad is that operator to fix the problem so even with that mentality shift at least java's picking up three kills you're seeing where solace can sometimes not be the most useful is it's like do you want to switch to your gadget and get some more intel and be potentially swung by someone who knows where you are because you're making noise with your gadget or do you want to play it safe and instead just kind of Stay back and hold your gun on, not really know where people are coming from and only have sound cues to work off of and potentially miss an important intel. It's one of her downsides I think might sort of balance her out, but in the end can kind of make, in the end, she can still be very powerful, especially there's a lot of players still alive on the board. Yeah, the attack has just been playing scare tactics, Monty. Continually, yeah, all round tripping the beeper, trying to make as much noise as possible and just inspire fear in the defense. Butter's now going down below, functioning even more like a pulse, but not quite finding the locations of players until the cams find something for him. If he's caught everything that he just got to see on the cam, then he might actually have a big advantage coming back in, but he still has to deal with the Nomad's air jabs. Even if he knows where they are, he's gonna make some noise when he tries to come back upstairs. Down to a 1v2 Butters, trying to maybe get in. They've been spotted. They're trying to put some shots out. Damage is being done onto them. So Maui is at full HP, but Java is kind of low shots, unfortunate. We know a whole lot they can do. They do have the ping. They have some intel to work with, but time is running out. They got to get in here now. The SMG 11 in hand. They're going to swing on. They do end up getting one on the Maui, but Java is right behind them and is able to pick up the kill. Unfortunately, the clutch will not happen, and the attackers, UCF, are going to be able to win out another round and are trying to take things back and tie the game up once again. Java looking at like an absolute hero, totally cleaning up the flanks, clutching in the end, three kills on the round total, I think I said three earlier, but he found the third by the end, so uh, big shout out to him for making me correct by the end of our round, and turning things back in the favor once again of the attackers as we even up the round count, 4-4 four, four for both teams. And yeah, it looks like we'll switch off. Not taking another stab at second floor after losing twice in a row. BGSU goes downstairs for the first time. Downstairs now, we're again seeing another Thunder, but also a Warden being brought out here. Again, I said that we would probably be seeing a Warden being brought out more. And well, it's for the reason that we're seeing right on the side of UCF, Caleb is currently running that Ying, and there's still time for them to get the intel that they do have a Warden on the board, and maybe shouldn't bring the Ying, but even with the Warden on the board, Ying can still be powerful, especially if the Warden is playing a bit aggressively, or isn't holding the angles that they should, or is just playing in a position that you can capitalize off of with either other utility, or by just completely ignoring them entirely. It all depends, and we're still going to see that Ying being brought up by Caleb, and well, Again, I think that there is potential for it to be disastrous if Butters is able to hit their shots and play in a good position. The opportunity is still there, and I hope that it does work out for them. It would be nice to see BGSU get a little taste of their own medicine. Yeah, see, here's the thing with Warden, is that he's a counter to Ying, but only if he's able to maneuver himself to be in the gunfights with Ying. So you see him going for Pillar underneath Big Tower Stairs uh, as a great flex position, but the rotates have to come out if the Ying goes over, say, to Freezer, right? One of the common places to be Yinging. Uh, he's got to be able to get over there, and he's got to be able to push up like he has now upon seeing that there's a bunker take. So he's able to watch through here, and he's going to synergize pretty well with the smoke grenades as well. So I really like to see that. That's a show 
show that we're gonna get some nice warden value out of butters and so many drones have just been flung to their death through this hole that's four drones are destroyed plus at least one Rotero. so the defense is eaten well down there even if they do lose enrock up top man count now firmly in favor of ucf and the utility coming in now is able to clear out a little bit of what bgsu do have in store but there still is plenty of time for bgsu to stabilize they started to do that now the clone getting taken out immediately and butters does know there are two people above the cam did give them some intel maybe not two but at the very least one is known to be above so potential for them playing close up here is great but unfortunately Ooh. try to watch no one's watching e -box. easy kill yeah, you, it's really important to have your warden pivoting if you need to, but you've got to have someone else to watch the other angles that he is not. There's still two players watching laundry, and there's just no play happening there. They've heard no sound. Yeah, the defense is going to have to walk, push all the way back to this side of objective on the south. While the plant goes down, totally covered by Yings. I don't even think they can hear this. They are just now hearing this for the first time that the diffuser is planted. One player moves up. They're plenty healed up by the Thunderbird, but that's not going to do much for them, especially when you have to push up. Up on the angle with a shotgun. Try gets another one after totally securing this defuse. Two kills for the defense. Shaggy has to do it on his own now, though. He's got to shut down Try and then find Caleb's plate even further back. Defuser now solidly confirmed on location, but there's holes all over the wall. There's Swiss cheese and Try finds his third. And there's where not having the greatest positioning can come back to bite you. And we saw that with the Warden. The Ying was able to just effectively push in super ease and clear out sight and have the plant be down lickety split and because of that warden playing off in a bad position not really able to effectively shut down what was being brought to the table that ying because they said to play aggressively on the stairs and they didn't have anyone covering them that's just bad positioning from not just the warden of course them playing aggressively on the stairs is totally fine if they have someone covering them that communication is key there when it comes to them being able to hold that and well after a round like that bgsu they decide they're going to take their time out discuss what happened they won four in a row they definitely show they have what it takes but ucf it may have taken them a round to really get it together but they've shown that they feel very comfortable on attacking oregon yeah, I'm already really liking the cadence of this match. It is just back and forth. Each team looking so comfortable, really going to show off everything that they're worth. But then it's just taken away from them as the other team takes their turn. And it's UCF in the driver's seat right now. BGSU has to be hoping that the timeout can do more for them than it did for the Knights earlier. Especially now that the Knights are looking at the five uh, round mark. That's just one more to six and that's one more to seven. These are the major breaking points. Five and six for the match to really start going one way. Back down to basement again. The question is, are the adaptations that they're going to have to be making in terms of the positioning, in terms of the communication, in terms of how they're playing as a team, is that going to be enough for them to really perform where it counts on this defense? They just lost it, and they haven't changed their upper lineup all too much, if at all. And so because of that, it gets me a little bit worried they're not they're not going with a different strategy they're going with the same strategy to try to clean up some of it there and that can be all that it takes sometimes you know you just you made one bad call and it cost you the round that happens right but it worries me just a little bit that maybe this is where we start to see bgsu continue to falter and ucf kind of run away with things i hope not but i'm sure certainly there UCF is going for big tower take right here off the bat. I don't think there's anyone holding up here, so it should make a lot quicker. No trades necessary to start with. We did see a lot go down right in the basement underneath these staircases, though. This is where everything opened up, and that's where Butters actually got killed from coming down uh, right by Harry Potter. Is the defense going to watch all the angles necessary around Bunker this time, though? We've got one player in the Bunker extension, one in E-Box this time. But this is the Bandrews as our flex. He's moved around. Uh, he was over by Laundry Side before, and now he's playing closer to where the action was last round. Look at the players on the 
side of BGS, you are going to take this man advantage and they're just going to try to play passively and make sure that they can get the most out of that. We do have the Finca being on the board, which will allow them to heal up and get these fast pushes in. But I'm not really excited to do a fast push. They're, not, they're waiting for the execute to happen, which can be dangerous, especially if Try goes down early, but at least for the moment, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Instead, they're just going to make sure they get these hatches open, get in a good spot to be able to play and get these pushes down, instead of just trying to push entirely from the tower side. They're going to be going down Freezer, maybe drop in another hatch. There's a lot of different options they can do, and I think it's really where you have the most options, and you get the most effect when it comes to actually winning this basement. Uh, try kind of jumping the gun here, moving up all the way up through Freezer. Uh, trade coming off about the same time, but Banjus, uh, Banjus gets to get out of here fully alive. Uh, I think that actually is a trade between Caleb and Ed Rock, as we leave ourselves in a 2v2 Banjus, and Maui even mirroring that sliver of health. Mahidrian, our hero player for UCF, and that hard breach is left as the only player up. He's got quite a bit of health to take. Oh, takes the pre-fire and downs Banjus. He doesn't know for sure, and he gets the headshot to secure the kill as well. Now, Butters is all alone. I don't know if he knows that Maui is down, but he might just be using him as bait. Yeah, there's the finish off, and now both players are very much on the same page. Diffuser is in Mahi's hands as he rounds this corner. <gasps> Barely misses the head. So he knows they do finally start firing bullets. Trade on both sides. Mahi is very, very low. He's trying to find the kill, but Butter is just absolutely running. Absolute track star over here. Grandpa's putting in his shoes, and well, with that running, it is going to be BGSU taking that round not cleanly by any stretch of the imagination. Very, very close round, and one that could have very easily gone the way of UCF with just a few more well-placed shots, but still... A win is a win. They'll tie things up once again. I was assuming this game was going to be competitive. I was assuming these teams were going to give it everything they got. But I didn't try to be this competitive. Back and forth. We've seen streaks come out from both teams. But in the end, it all coalesces at a 5-5. And this is where I think that we might see one team start to run away with it. I don't know if it's going to be BGSU. I don't know if it's going to be UCF. But I feel like we could see two rounds back-to-back -back definitely happen for one of these teams. And it's all up to the other one to obviously make sure things stay close and you get this to overtime. Yeah, and that's the way that this has been going as well, Power. It's been back-to-back -back rounds for both of these teams. It's only been three streaks between the two just trading back and forth and then back once more. So it's been all about these streaks. If there's two rounds in a row, I wouldn't be surprised one bit. And second floor actually turns out has been the more volatile objective for both of the rosters as things don't really go as expected for them. BGSU is totally changing the script on their roster and their approach to what this round is going to be. They've got like the most like I'd say like default kind of hold possible. Like I'd say maybe like an Aruni over uh, Azami maybe would be more common, but they've got a lot of grenade denial. They've got shields. They've got smoke. They've got Goyo. There's so much area denial. They're looking to bunker up this round. Could be what needs to be done, especially when you have had UCF that have kind of just kind of walked in in some rounds and just kind of taken things and we had the we had the aggressive play didn't work all too well the last couple of rounds so you know complete 180 reversal and now just trying to make sure they can just play tight close in sight this is where we're going to see monty potentially get a ton of value here unless we can see him get shut down early on by a well placed c4 a couple of impacts to the face either way the potential is there for monty to have a large impact but not guaranteed Oh, I love these Kiba setups. Oh, <laughs> a little awkward moment as they stare at each other past these shields. You realize that a Monty isn't going to be a threat to you for a little while. You can turn your back on him. If you hear the shield moving, uh, then you should be concerned that the revolver or that P12 is coming out. Otherwise, you can just assume there's someone watching the window. Uh, Kiba barrier also... Uh, yeah, up here after some death or some health tax was taken on Bandrews from this same player on the Nomad. And oh my gosh, wait, moving out here is actually probably pretty scary for Butters. He's going to get 
collapsed on pretty soon here, especially with Bedroom getting droned out really fully. His location is told now, and the shield is set up fully in Master. That being said, a minute left to go for UCF to get this push in. And if there was a time they got to push in, it's got to be now. And we're seeing these flashes come out here. We're seeing the Goyo cannons are being popped. There's a stall for a ton of time, but the potential is still there for them to just jump right in and just completely bypass them. This Monty putting pressure into Trophy. They know where someone is. They know where the players are. The pings are definitely coming out from the Mon. T and Caleb's going to open things up by getting the first pick, pushing in all the way towards Pit. And now they're forcing even more of the Goyo Cannons to come out, even more smoke canisters to come out. And they're just trying to stall completely and make sure there's nothing that any of the players on UCF can do to get inside and get the diffuser down. That's huge from Coffee picking up the kill on the window of objective. Try gets another kill as well. For only 45 seconds on the clock and 10 players still in the game. Things are pretty dire for the attackers. They have to pick up a lot more kills than just those two. And with Goyle Fire still on the floor, Caleb just has to make this plant, even if it's not fully supported. Mally picks up another kill on Edrock. Oh my god, it gets two more collaterals. One taken by Try in the end, but the defenders just walk out into a terrible crossfire they could have stayed in dorms and been just fine i am not totally sure what just happened there it felt like a bit of a miscommunication maybe or maybe they just assumed that the monty was by themselves and they there's no one behind them i they I, either way a unfortunate set of circumstances there for the players on bgsu and well it is going to mean that now ucf are at match point and bgsu they're going to not opt to go back upstairs. Instead, they're going to opt to go to Meeting Kitchen, where so far, we, I'm pretty sure we've only seen this site once. It was a pretty handy attacker win. Not the greatest spot to be in if you're BGSU. Yeah, although they were the ones taking the win on attack, so that might speak something to their comfortability on this site, and they're going to be hoping that's what gets them through, especially staring at the barrel this match point on the objective, the map that they chose at the beginning. This is their Oregon pick, so they have to hope that this is what's going to get them there, say, at least going to map two, maybe getting that one, or at the very least, moving into our map three on skyscraper later the attack is pulling out a couple interesting picks that we haven't seen brought by either team so far mahi on gridlock and try now locked in for osa osa being brought out is certainly an interesting one it's not fair that i personally really love not only just because she's trans and i gotta rep that but also because of the fact that her gadget can be very powerful in the right circumstances but it can be somewhat useless in other ones and this is one where we're not seeing too many impacts only one left on the board for butters but we are seeing two c4s which can completely shut down an osa shield but also you're, you're really hoping to have long sight lines to really make the most out of osa and they're sort of if they're doing a meeting attack i would say definitely but they're not doing a meeting attack they're doing or excuse me not necessarily meeting attack i apologize if they were doing a small tower push over in to dining then i would say definitely bringing osa i would make sense but unless they're planning on getting op in this um, stage wall and then pushing in that way, that would be the only spot that I would really see also being useful for. But I thought like that kind of limits you maybe pushing in from split if you do a garage take. I, I just, it feels like it's a bit too much iffy. And there's other operators that bring impact EMPs that could give you more. Ah, I see. I, it looks like this is probably one of the main applications that they have in mind. Try is probably also going to try and set one up ahead of Diffuser in order to make it really easy to defend in a post-plant scenario. They do have to get there, though. Down a player already with Maui having been taken out. My, he has perfect sightline into objective. He doesn't know that there's an SAS operator right around that corner, though, and around that shield. There still is electrification on wall. First presence of Kaid. There's a swing? A swing coming out? Oh! <laughs> okay! That's a little bit worrisome of one. You don't have explosives on smoke, so you can't do anything about Osa, especially that close. All you can do is ward her off for the 15 or the 10 seconds that you're going to be able to hold it for. Yeah, Coffee doesn't have any points of contact. He's going to try and slink out of here before his doom is imminent. It seems like just the players on UCF are just can't really get a whole lot going. Another kill now going the way of BGSU. They're just going to kind of send the clone in to scare the smoke to make them back up just a little bit here. But they still haven't gotten a pick. 
and there's almost no time left in coffee now they're gonna get one as well bringing things down to a 5v2 and the potential flank up the stairs as well could be huge if they are able to get it going but it feels like yeah they're just stalling out here even though this attack was so good for bgsu when they did it last time they attacked upstairs and then pushed down into kitchen this time a meeting ticket is happening and i don't think it's the greatest but at least it's not working out super well for ucf only 15 seconds left it feels like it might be a bit of an impossibility oh we looked away there just at that moment but try actually took the kill on the player just peeking through the hatch there's another oh no no there's actually information up there java up there for the attackers and rock though is going to come around the corner get a kill and pinch with coffee and it's going to finish off that round that's exactly well, what pgsu needed mm-hmm yeah that's with that overtime and a bit of a again a bit of a risky gamble honestly taking it to a tertiary site but they clearly felt comfortable in there and they absolutely dominated on that site so it may have looked risky but clearly be just knew knew what they were doing and now that we're in overtime they're going to start things out on defense once again where all eyes are going to be on ucf to try and you know win this one out on attack and then really take things down on defense because that that match was you know it was a bit very very back and forth so long but they are going to have to once again attack the same exact site hopefully they've learned their lesson hopefully they know what they need to bring out this time in order for them to effectively take this site maybe it involves pushing from different direction maybe it involves just some cleaner gunplay who knows not for me to say unfortunately but they, those adaptations need to come otherwise they're down one overtime and never a spot you want to be in Oh, not for you to say. NCC hasn't given you the script yet. Here, I, 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 I got to send this over to you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I already, already know how this okay. one ends. It's really great all the way through. You guys are going to love it. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I really love here oh for BGSU God. is that they've actually really locked in on their advantage here. This is their home objective, their home team. Today, they get the first choice of map. So this one's supposed to set the precedent. And they play a better meeting hall. This is a weird objective. Not played a lot in NA either because it requires so much vertical play. You can't take take it the way that UCF attempted to last round. They put pressure up on the top of uh, big stairs. They put it on the bottom of big stairs, but all five players come in the same direction. You don't have any off angles to be coming from. So that was a great bulkhead for the attack, but they need someone else to be creating cross angles with them. You can't do it. Just slam your head into the defense. The defense has angles to hold. It's always in their advantage. So right off the bat, seeing Maui go upstairs here, taking the sledge. This is going to allow him along with some intel and java help it on the other side this is going to allow them to actually take this upstairs site and this means that they can open up attic and the hatch there in order to look into site and try and take out bandrews up here without having raining fire from above them the whole time yeah he's going to be pinned here in just one moment especially if java moves over but the kite tricking is really paying off Sorry, I haven't I've been reading this script i can definitely tell they put extra work into this i can't believe they do that with uh, the smoke on map three absolutely, absolutely insane but yeah anyways anyway moving on now we are going to have the round be underway a trade does come out now or not really a trade necessarily but at least a trade in man counts we're going to have it go to four four minute 30 left and bgsu are now looking down the barrel of an attacking team that has taken the top four from them a lot of time was thought out by banjus excellent work from them to be able to do so but now it's going to be going down to the game of shooty shooty bang bang which is what java's doing right now as they pick up butters but that smoke going down the potential is huge now it's up to maui to make some vertical play and also the lion coming out as well just to make things even more difficult for them maybe not able to effectively counter the vertical play because you know you got a really got something ringing really loud in your ear it's not, it's not very fun now is it Oh, I love UCF has showed us they do know exactly what they do need to do on this objective. As soon as they sat down and thought about it for a second, they said, well, Maui and Java can make this happen. Java does get shot down by Coffee, but there's still a player up top. Even after the C4 goes out, Maui's still raining havoc. He's going to push the player out of security just by using his gadget to open up some holes. And it's going to make it really hard to hold in Kitchen as well. And that's going to push Enrock straight into the waiting jaws of Try, who is uh, looking to support a cross angle for the diffuser to actually go down. Mahi now sneaking in there where the... The smoke once was has access to sight now he just has to watch out for shaggy still in meeting hall fuser starting to go nice. down coffee does open things up by getting one of them out 
unfortunately they are going to be behind the osa shield though coffee does get another one now and well not much use that lion skin is going to do they know exactly where you are because they're right in front of you mahi the swing is going to come out the pre-fire is going to happen though and it's no coffee way. coffee excuse me with an ace ends up clutching things out for bgsu i was so sure that ucf were going to be able to take that they looked like it to be in such a power position but coffee those gunning stills with the mp5k are just too strong and that extra 15 percent damage with the extended barrel just too much for them to hand joe and a clutch from bgs do will put them on overtime match point and now they have to attack that was one heck of a round yeah sometimes it can be exciting to see a team or at least uh less likely to see a team going to meeting hall on your round one of overtime really putting a lot of those marbles on being able to take the site that gets a lot less reps in but the stats don't lie bgsu showing us they're just better on that objective winning every single round that we played there the, the three of them that have been done this one by a lot closer especially when the knights made the adjustments that they need it was a beautiful attacking round but coffee just wouldn't lose a gunfight and made sure that he was in the right spot all the time holy great play from him. now with bgsu attacking they're in a position where this is not do or die necessarily if they lose this it isn't over but i was about to say i was like we're gonna see another grim because grim had some effects but i feel like again you would have gotten more value out of say a capital and then boom there we go bandrew is going to be switching over to the capital still time for them to switch over and as i say that it, it ends up going away and the capital is going to be stuck i'm excited to see capital we're going to be hopefully seeing some good value being gotten here. There isn't a mine on the board to counter those capital bolts. And capital can be very powerful, especially for clearing out operators like a zombie when they're playing aggressively inside a master bedroom. No zombie on the board this time or round that the players on BGC have to worry about, but still, the opportunity is there for them to put a lot of pressure on. They just gotta make sure that the players on UCF are in the right position. And also, you know, the smoke isn't exactly awful. It can help you get a good plant down every once in a while. Yeah, I actually like there's a lot of projectiles from BGSU at a moment when it's not really that fully covered by UCF. Uh, I, maybe that's really good droning and good recognition. Uh, otherwise, a little lucky that Mahi's going to be the only one playing Ooh, projectile denial this time. Maui's bringing Frost. That has had some... Uh not as much impact as the defenders have hoped for, but the shield is what you're really picking her for, not just her gadget. Oh my god, beautiful butters, putting it right up underneath. Try he even blows up a Goyo canister with it, so doing double duty with his secondary gadget. That's a great start, especially with try or with my dream going down as well. Second explosive doesn't quite take out another canister, but that's a lot of ground opened up for the attackers. Things looking very dangerous for UCF right now. Down two isn't this position you want to be in. We do have some pretty good gunners still left on the board for UCF, but they need to come alive where it counts. I'm looking at Java as well. Five and 11, not the greatest score. Climb, they are playing a lot of support, but when it comes to a 5v3, when it comes to potentially the final round, if you don't win this, you need all the help you can get. You need to make sure that you are there, even if your job is to support, you need to make sure that you are the best support player you can be. And well, now things are starting to stall a little bit. The players on the side of BGSU are just trying to get some damage. Jin, just trying to maybe see if they can, you know, get another peek. There are some more utility, and so far, not a whole lot is being done. It's players like Enrock have taken a little bit of damage themselves, but things are probably going to happen soon here. Some pings are coming through the swings, coming out. No kills happening, though, and 45 left on the clock. Looks like the BGSU could stall out here. They really need to get rid of Java right now. Yeah, Java's doing so much, and he's got those ADSs to cover his back as well. Maui somehow evading the Capital Bolts. There wasn't a secondary push to force him any further out of the corner. There's a lot more fire, and now it's on his side. It's going to make it so that they can't even jump in big window. 25 seconds left, so it's going to have to be a last second push for UCF if they're going to make it at all. Java and Maui doing so much to hold down the objective. Not quite the kill, but the down. Finding it in the end. Java getting exactly what he wants maui getting two on the other side it's now just butters against maui as butters has been able to make it all the way into sight but he doesn't quite have the intel to be working off of he knew where maui was before but now he doesn't all the way tucked away in the corner no man could move maui out of there and he's gonna keep the team in the map 
Maui absolutely coming alive there, and Java doing an amazing job as well of being able to put the pressure over towards the trophy side of the map and just make sure that absolutely no one could get in. And if they could, well, they took a lot of damage in the process. Amazing work from UCF to be able to clutch out that round, a position that looks very, very dangerous. And now we're at the absolute final round that we could possibly be. 7-7. Seven, seven. This is anyone's game so far. I figured we'd probably go all the way, but I didn't expect it to be as close as it was right now. And we're heading back down to basement. The old reliable site for both of these players and both these teams and we're seeing a vigil being brought out on the defensive side for a potential huge roam game and potential flank but a last second adaptation can be a little bit risky but if there wasn't time to do it you know i would want it to be now when it matters the most so here's the thing about the way this overtime has shaken out. UCF gets to be on the attack, and when they are attacking, their record is 5-2. to two. That's a big advantage to have when we're putting the whole stakes of this map on just one round. So UCF, they have uh, something to lose at this point. It is their advantage by two and a half times to one right now. So... Roman upstairs, some different strats pulled out, but are still bringing the ward. It's been a big impact, and it will be really important for shutting down Caleb if that comes out. The full push through bunker from UCF. They're going to put it all on this play. It looks like potential another fast push coming in here. That is going to happen. The blitz rushing in is full blind. Butters is going to go ahead and pick one off to start out. It's going to be the Havana going down. The shotgun coming out now. The smoke as well is going to get the kill on to Caleb. Coffee sitting with 21 kills. Absolutely insane stat. Line 4v3. Now the push has slowed down. The smoke getting a little bit of damage, but Java is going to equalize, killing Butters this time. The second top frag is going to be down for BGSU. The swing is going to come out, but Enrock isn't going to be able to get the kill. Maui is going to read it. 3v2. Now with a minute off the board, BGSU could slow down and try to make sure that they can't push in. And UCF looks like they're going to take some time to drone and try to make sure the players on BGSU are in the worst possible position for them to be able to get pushed. Somehow this is coming out favorable for UCF after all the carnage settles. Even after Butters did exactly what he needed to to shut down Mahi Chava, making a great shot through that pixel angle. Now Shaggy is all alone. He's in the freezer, so he's going to have to take over some ground and take like three gunfights in a row. Try is beginning to play. He's not going to have intel on this one and his location barely not told by Lions E1D. He's just going to pre-fire and hope that he can take another kill after that one. Gonna swing right out damage is going to be tagged onto them java does go ahead and back up they do no go way. down down to a 1v1 try last one left remaining upstanding it's shaggy they're trying to peek around they do not know where the final player is they're trying to get it done they're going to go ahead and stick to the fuse for just a brief second trying to bait it out they still haven't seen the final player try playing things very passively they're going to swing out no way here and they turn around the last second shaggy manages the clutch in the very end there's plenty of time left remaining and shaggy manages to not only clutch this round but clutch the game for their team and it's going to be bgsu taking this map eight to seven what an amazing game shaggy just putting it all on the table winning this one for the defense they barely eke it out taking their first map uh choice in round one map two though we're going to border this is a very different objective one that's really focused around vertical play which funny enough i think actually has really been shown to be the advantage for bowling green so they're looking to keep up that same kind of mileage and really make a point out of this match especially when they're o2 going into a 2-0 roster What a way to open things up, though, against a 2-0 roster, taking it to them in the very end. Amazing clutch there from a player that had some high moments later on, or earlier on, excuse me, but that was certainly where it counted. A 1v3 clutch to win that out. You couldn't get more cinematic than that. But the very least for the moment, that is going to be the end of map one. We are going to be going to map two. If I remember correctly, it is going to be border but before we go to border we are going to go to a quick break so don't go anywhere stay tuned we'll be back shortly
Howdy again, everybody. I'm back, still with the illustrious power of the storm. So we just saw our first map of this matchup, Bowling Green State University versus the UCF Knights. Oregon went all the way to those final seconds of round 15, and BGSU takes their map pick. So we move on now to UCF. So it's going to be border for map two. A very close game, and we're hoping for another one here as we head into map two and border is a map and we mentioned it at the very beginning but not everyone was there for that where border is a map that can be a lot more messy i guess is a good word for it. Bor oregon is a map that's played a ton players love to use it as their default scrim map and it's played so often and especially in like ranked for example that players kind of know what to do and so you get a lot of standard takes players pushing up through blue players pushing in and getting the main wall upstairs there's just a lot of default stuff but when it comes to border there is some defaults obviously getting the armor all open for example but it can get very messy a lot of times and where we see teams shine the most is how they're able to adapt to that messiness and to what either team decides to do and not just default but instead have those unique and adapting strategies as the games go on that make it so interesting to watch and that's why i love seeing some of these more unconventional and less played maps yeah, and before we get into that and really get to get our hands and eyes all over that, I've got a nice little NECC announcement to bring to you guys. So the NECC and College Esports X are excited to announce a new partnership for their upcoming March 22nd, 2023 event in Boston. This is a joint initiative designed to help foster the growth and sustainability of the collegiate esports ecosystem called Esports Innovation. Esports Innovation is a program designed to address collegiate esports industry challenges related to the economic downturn, job market instability, and the need for more infrastructure. The innovation initiatives encompass programs related to experimental learning, workforce training, curriculum development, collegiate program support, esports startup incubation, and competitive innovation. So look for that coming up in March 22nd of this year. So 
just shy, just by a single day shy of a month from now. So keep your eyes open for that. If you're looking to see on NECC or CEX, like on Twitter, Instagram, wherever you may be following them. And with that out of the way, we do have the bands going underway already. Dokubi and Jackal being taken off the board. Two operators that can be very powerful. We last map we talked about why Dokubi could be powerful and Jackal getting banned here on a map like border where roaming is very very powerful i'm not too surprised to see that come out either a zombie as well another operator where when things get messy when things get crazy you can make things a bit more concise by changing the map to more adapt to how you would like to play it and having her off the board as long along with amira limits that possibility significantly yeah, so there's going to be a lot less of that bunker and down with the bulletproof peak holes. Just both those operators taken away. Um, we did see some really good Azami use before. I don't remember exactly which player it was, but hopefully we'll uh, see something reminiscent of it so we can get that shout out uh, back off. We're seeing the Solace again uh, was used very, very effectively by Bowling Green State University, and I think it's Coffee now pulling out Solace for this round. We're going to have a site that is sometimes not even played. It's the fourth site to get played occasionally, although typically it is just the tertiary site. That being heading over to Bathroom and Tellers, a site that I feel like can be pretty powerful, but can also kind of crumble apart depending on how you decide to set this up. It's BGSU's first choice, not what you see at all. Almost Armory is played 100% of the time as the very first site that is played sometimes it's going to be over towards server side but it's almost never bathroom and you know I, I quite like it i quite like changing it up and doing something new and well i'm curious to see how effective it'll actually be i think it all depends on the roam game upstairs and how effectively they're able to do that but unfortunately we didn't see too much that set up so far most of it's focused on this first floor for there's quite a bit of soft destruction available. Actually, just about as much as you're really going to be bringing from UCF. Try actually will have some available either. Uh, <clears throat> well, I guess not bringing those can openers, so I'd be assuming a uh, sh short shotgun in the secondary slot. Of course, Hibana for opening up hatches. And both Maui and Java bringing our quintessential soft breach characters. Oh, the headshot just isn't going to be there for Butters. He sees it, but he can't react as fast as Mahi, who really put up a bunch of kills last map and is starting it off on a good streak. Opening things up is super important. Hopefully, Butters got down all of their cap can traps. Unfortunately, I didn't get to check right before they passed. But in any case, oh. Bandrews is going to be playing close, and um, they just don't drone him out. And that's a quick, easy 2K for them. And they have a Kona Station in pocket to top themselves up to potentially go back into things to get that stim they swing out here the shots are coming through they don't get tagged and they're just getting stuck in this corner pressured out the time the manpower that has been wasted is so valuable even though they go down that's still absolutely huge for bgsu uh, Maui just using that soft destruction, taking the walls and players alike. All three players upstairs right now, it's that 3v3, but Java's at really low health, and especially for lob and explosives around. Shaggy's is gone, but Coffee notably still has two impact grenades and is upstairs as well on the other side not moving as all the sound has been heard more explosives going down below this time from the attackers that's one of java's two grenades he's shown us some great acuity with his grenades but he's only got one more for this round Man left on the board, and it's a 3v3. The players on BGSU are currently bunkered up inside those castle barricades, making things very difficult for the players on UCF to really get anything going on this first floor. And we're seeing Java now sawing out just a little bit here. They're trying to push it up now. Pretty safe for them to do so, but they do have that sledgehammer to quickly open things up. They're going to start putting some more pressure on the coffee. Actually, didn't see. They're upstairs, and they're going to be able to rotate all the way around. And well, let's shoot Java. Unfortunately for them, and Rock is going to take them out by shooting them through that open castle barricade. And now Maui, playing in workshop, is going to try to put some more pressure onto one of the final remaining players on the site now. Although things again are stalling out quite a bit. Caleb drops the site and goes down quickly. Maui does find it, and it's Enrock that gets the final kill. That flank upstairs, unfortunately, not netting a whole lot of value. It doesn't really matter all too much. The players in sight able to quickly pick everyone up. 
everything really going the way of just gunfight throughout that round. I mean, Mahi picking up a great one, uh, but just totally being shut down over, over droning. Really, everything's gone the way of the Fraggers. Coffee didn't even have to get involved. The defense just held their angles and made good on their lines of sight. And that shut down UCF, not the start that they were looking for to their map pick. Not the greatest op ever but it was somewhat close they really just got caught up by that drone game losing those two players very early Attack on to the player playing upstairs and just playing close in the corner i believe that was going to be banjers that was doing that it's just not a situation you want to really be in even though they did end up getting them a lot of time was stalled and the man count was gone and they just kind of stalled out from there unfortunately and when it came time for them to push it kind of dropped in the site you know, kind of put some pressure on the windows but ended up getting shot not the again not the great situation to be in, but something that is very easy to clean up. Just work on your drone game, making sure that you're checking all your corners, because you right now, you are 100% certain, BGSU, they're going to want to rat, they're going to want to rat hard. So now you got to anticipate that and make sure you don't get caught off next time. This is really fascinating. Coffee is playing like the most different Solus than from what we saw from Butters on the last map. So I'm really curious to see a little bit more of him this way. I mean, obviously running the shotgun is going to really impact the playstyle. Having SMG 11 still available as your secondary, like you don't really need another gun as long as you've got an SMG 11. And even before we've seen Solus's swap off of their SMG to the SMG 12 so that they can have that machine pistol in these close quarter fights, especially when clutching and it's really going to be all down to that ads time so it's still something pretty useful at long range with its fire rate and he's hoping to be over droned again but yeah this spot's not going to be very safe for him anymore they are going to go ahead and back on no damage being done onto them though butters though is taking some damage they are currently playing in fount and upstairs along with Bandrews, just trying to put some pressure onto anyone who might be trying to push into them, although mainly it's going to be worrying about them getting through this armory door from outside on the balcony, but it's actually going to be Java that goes down first with Butters being the first one to do so. Coffee will also following up being another kill to SB11, like you mentioned, absolute amazing work from those two to really put that pressure on and try to make sure that the players on UCF are having an awful time of it. And right now, Mahi just really trying to see if they can get anything done here. Impacts from below, putting a little bit of pressure on to them, but they're not really going to get anything done. They're going to go and back out, almost right into the crosshair of Butters. They do stop just in time. The secondary shotgun's going to jump out. Oh no, Butters, don't do it. Don't jump outside. It's not worth it, man. It's not worth it. Uh... Ooh. It was worth it a moment ago. It would have been worth it. It would have been huge. Mahi's only got a 20 round mag to be working with. So he fired off basically his entire rounds. And now Butters overstaying gets himself down as Maui moves on up. Yep, he's going to take his kill and he's cleared this out for Mahi. You could tell from the way Mahi was playing when he actually moved in and saw that impact grenade. They had no idea what's actually in offense. They were just trying to make a play now that they're down players. And with an indication that there's players below, they're not going to push the same angle again. Their feet are being watched from below. Coffee has sight lines. I don't know if he's... He's not using his gadget right now to check. Maui left on a ha one health as Mahi is going to take out the kill for him. Taking out Bandrews, the player who got those two kills last round. He's still keeping quite a few of them up. A lot of intel from below for Coffee. He's going to need to be the... Oh, play denial, though, and he doesn't stick around to see anything else going, even after seeing the diffuser. But again, it's going to have to be a full retake for these three. That fuse, though, is potentially going to put in a lot of work, making sure that the defenders are pushed off site, at least for a little bit, and Rock does push back in. But there's not a whole lot more that they can do besides just trying to get rid of that utility. Maui does go down, but it is Mahi that does pick up that kill on to and Rock. We are hearing those Nomad air jabs go off, putting some pressure on. No time left. Caleb has to try to plant the defuse. Zoran Mahi gets one all down to Shaggy left in a 1v2. The defuser it does end up going down post my situation. Once again, it's the Jaeger left to clutch, similar to how it was at the end of last. Now they know someone above, they know someone below, and although Shaggy gets one, Caleb is down below and ends up getting the headshot kill and securing the attacking round. Although it was definitely a lot closer than they would have liked it to be. Absolutely. This went pretty back and forth, and it sent a precedent once again that I think we're going to see this back and forth ping pong gameplay with these two teams, but no streaks to speak of yet. Last map, it was just two in a row, four, what, four in a row, five in a row, 
seven in a row. I don't know if that math works out at all. I'm just uh, going on vibes right now. Uh, what one, two, three, four in a row into a five in a row, and then back and forth in overtime. What? Back and forth to start things off. We might get to that end of map intensity that we had on Oregon right off the bat, especially with the interplay of these players. Once again, we're seeing another cap can be brought out. A lot of cap can being played. We did see them be banned on the last map, I'm pretty sure, if my memory serves correct. And yep. I, that's just because of the fact that on Oregon, you can put cap can so many goofy little places, in particular the walk-in closet and the next to master. I've seen so many people just put three of them right there, guaranteed kill, and then they just run into it to try to get the wall open with like a thermite, for example, and they just get blown to smithereens. And, well, not seeing a lot of value being got out of them last round. I believe one of them was hit out of all five of them. The rest of them were shot, but still, potential is there for that to be huge. If we're seeing two of them being put on this door, for example, potential for a kill or just a lot of damage be going out. Also, that's intel as well. Another huge thing that gets brought to the board. Capkin, very powerful operator that has the potential to do a lot, but also has the potential to be useless if you just use your eyes to look, but in the heat of the moment, it can sometimes be difficult to remember to do. Coffee is really sold on using that desk. Even dedicating to it a little harder, having someone kill off drones around him, that way he can stay here even longer. I... I don't see the vision, but I'll be happy if something happens. It'll be pretty exciting. Butters picks up the first kill. Mahedrian, huge, impactful player at all times for UCF. Taken off when he is the first frag. Usually the rounds aren't going the Knight's way. Well, things are starting out with, once again, the theme of this series, which is just back and forth, oh, back no. and forth, and also somewhat poor droning coming out from the attackers, and here we go. We are seeing Coffee, who is playing underneath the table, did not get droned out. They're going to get one. They down another. They're going to throw an impact. Unfortunately, it does not connect. So one from below. They do end up picking off the kill, and they get some damage onto Maui in the meantime. They're trying to see if they can pick up the kill. The wall is being over my Caleb. A lot of noise happening right now. It's a little bit chaotic, but don't worry. Everyone will just stay calm, figure out what's happening as they defenders start to kind of equalize and the attackers start to try to fall back a little bit and try to get to a position that they can actually hold they lost two very early on because of poor droning which is the most unfortunate thing you can possibly ask for and copy finally is going to get value out of sitting in a corner which they've done so many runs in a row now and it feels like it's only barely worked with a minute left to go now they're gonna need to, the attackers are gonna need to try to find something going on here otherwise it's gonna be a very handy defender win yeah, I don't think the attack still is going to know exactly where that problem point is. Nice headshot through the wall. Things are starting to even up, but Coffee finds his third kill. Even after that, two surprise kills. He's going to come up and get one nice and legit. Really shoring up the defense. Turns the corner, but Caleb gets another wall bang. The headshot. Now the evil eyes are going to be taking their tax on his health. It is wildly away quick. He gets another one and a fifth one. No way. Caleb, a one-man army. He doesn't doesn't even need to see these people through the walls oh but our maestro he he got too focused on his evil eye he didn't even get off the camps to defend himself so he goes down staring at his phone i have no idea what just happened the fact that that went the way that it did with coffee getting those picks and it's still ucf managing to come back amazing work there coming out from the players on the side of ucf final two remaining players just managed to make it work and also the intel coming out there were players that were on those drones that were giving those call outs to those players on the side of ucf and making sure they were able to swing and get those kills amazing work and i i have very little else we can say about that except for dgsu you gotta clean it up you gotta what was that clutch that we saw at the very end of the last map you gotta do that again but just as a team as a unit you're so close to being able to take that and then it just slips right between your fingers and well now we're gonna see once again another hold this time heading to back towards the bathroom site and well it was a pretty handy win last time it was down to about a 2v0 obviously by the end of it and we'll see if UCF, if they're going to be able to continue their dominance and win another round in a row, or if this is where BGSU once again take another round win on the board. 
I'd say that last round, that's why you respect your support player on your team. Because they've got to they've gotta lose deaths to so many unwinnable rounds. Just trying to hit their head against something that the rest of the team has made for them. And every once in a while, they're just going to find that that silver line right through the entire round and they're gonna follow it exactly and do everything that's needed sometimes it's planting and getting one kill to clutch up and sometimes it is just walking through that line of destruction that your teammates have made off of all those trades after trades even if you lose two to some crazy play and just make it happen just oh my god amazing stuff I, I'm going to be in awe on that play all night long. But in this round, we've once again gone back downstairs. That bathroom teller site. Butters once again taking the first kill. He's been involved in so many opening kills. And he's going to be the first one to go down for his team. When that grenade finally sings out this time, let's try. Even if he's going to get the kill posthumously. Yeah, Martin coming on in the chat. Yeah, what that definitely is the case. Although that's not really the trade you want to happen, especially when Butters did get a kill earlier on in the round. I, I traded the trade, so you know, not the worst situation to be happening. But also, it feels like that he swung out maybe a little bit too far there. It, you know, it's a bit difficult to tell, and obviously, the situation was a bit precarious nonetheless. But still. When it comes down to the situation that you're in, you don't want to be, you know, winning. You only win in gunfights by bonking someone in the head with a grenade, you know, like especially when they respond with a bullet to the head. It's not the greatest situation of all time, but in any case, the man advantage firmly in favor of BGSU. Now, the players on the side of BGSU are very heavily spread out. We have players all over, some in Sur, some in Workshop, some are on site, some are playing all way over inside of my luggage it's just a lot of players spread out here and they're going to make it difficult for ucf to really funnel in because they can just play the retake quite well if they're positioned correctly Ooh, java gets a kill that's going to even up this the player account the defense has been playing pretty spread they've had the luxury with the man of who advantage they've been spreading out to try and find the attackers and find them bandrews has but he's found it on the other side of the firing uh barrel of a rifle unfortunately now shaggy playing on this corner looking to try and find some there's a plant going down do the defenders know this caleb just dropped no was planted it looks like they were roaming a bit too heavily they didn't really have any idea to where they were free fire is going out here and it's trades across the board but it's mostly orange and java gets the final kill and manages to from above stop the defenders in their tracks getting the final kills of the round and winning another one out it looks like that going back to bathroom wasn't enough for bgsu to be able to take that one and in the end ucf they tie things or not tie things excuse me they take things all the way three to one they're making sure that this half is guaranteed to be even they might just go a little bit further bgs you let them but just any time for them to come back it is now we're not having any timeouts being called and i want to want to save them for later we are going to armory where once again we're going to be seeing a couple of familiar operators being on the board once they load in of course there we go and i think from that round, what we really need to take is that the, while the Rome game can be very powerful on border, like we mentioned previously, sometimes if you commit a bit too much, can be devastating, and they need to find that good balance. I feel like that maybe when you're down two, maybe don't have two players off site. That might not be the great situation to be in, just for future, obviously. Yeah, I think that is the problem that we're seeing uh, for BGSU on some of these defenses is... Uh... Our, our roamers are a little bit uh, behind the tick of what you need to be on when to rotate back in. It's a little bit of a game sense thing, so it's hard to really directly address. But as a roamer, you got to be like pinging like a sonar on a radar going, uh, is site fully defended? Do I need to be back right now? You got to be able to have that thought going through your head pretty darn often so you can make sure that you're not getting caught out and having to retake site because it's hard to play attack as a defender. Your gadgets just aren't meant for it. I, I will say that it's, it's not entirely fair. I, some credit needs does need to be given to UCF for being able to hold those crosses, especially from above. Players like Java were doing an amazing job of making sure that nobody could really pressure them all too much by watching those hatches and just making things really difficult. So good work on them, but still, BGS, you need to have the wherewithal to be able to get around, even with those or when those gun 
fights. It's unfortunately it's just kind of how it goes. And well, now we see the round getting underway. Nothing too crazy has happened so far. We are seeing a Monty coming out here, and there isn't really too much to come from the Monty besides a C4 in, in Bandrew's hands, and then obviously the smoke names coming out from Coffee. But Coffee is going to be playing a smoke, which typically does play in a bit of a precarious situation. Although speaking of precarious. Mahi does show that Butters was certainly in a uh, dangerous one. Oh, this is huge. Mahidrian playing Rome clear right below. He's playing potentially a suicide game just to make sure that there isn't a C4 below. The smoke goes out. Nearly taken down. Try. He barely gets out with his life, but he's got the shield and he's got a defuser down in the room. Great intel from the attackers. There we go. Mahidrian finally shut down. Maui downed as well, but Try is able to watch over their prize, their defuser successfully planted. Bandrews coming down below, but too late. He's going to get that kill. It's not worth very much if you're going to lose the rounds, though. Coffee, our smoke player, playing to make sure that something like this doesn't happen, but. They just weren't quick enough to realize it was really nice execution from UCF. And they got a bit lucky that the way that the defense was being played this time actually was just about the perfect one for them to work with. There's only one player over an armory, only one player in office. A little bit more of a spread roam this round, laterally, which isn't a problem usually, but... UCF gave no sign that they were going for uh, an office plant with Monty, and that's like relatively common take, but they didn't show their hand until the diffuser was already going down. Even still, that's a similar issue that we had last round, uh, last round obviously being two rounds ago now, but the roam was too heavy, and when they tried to make their way back, they just fell into the waiting arms of players like Mahi, who were just waiting for them to start running across as they tried to panic, like, oh my god, the defuse is going down. And some of them down below trying to get some C4 kills. Not the best position that you really want to be in, and it cost them, and now they cannot take this half going even. They have to, at the very least, take it for two, which is an awful, but still not a position you want to be in. And it's just because of that they're making these mistakes. They're roaming a bit too heavily. Having a one or two offsite is okay, but having three can be a little bit much unless you're hold, unless you're doing an extensive hold out and to say, for example, break room where the attack is often to come, but then you can quickly rotate back to site because they're, it's not too far away. Not necessarily a roam, but more of like a soft lurk. It's actually a little bit of a harder lurk depending on the circumstances. I think that I would love to see BGSU adapt. This is the last run they have to do it before they go on to the attack. And if they do want to end up winning, there's a chance they might be going to overtime where if they don't make that adaptation now, it could hurt them significantly if that time comes. Yeah, this is a rough looking score to have on this first half on your defense. Uh, to be fair, it's border. It's not their map choice. Uh, but you still don't want to be seeing these rounds. Border isn't really friendly to the defenders like a lot of other objectives in this game are. Or other maps in this game are. Ooh, some fire going back and forth. BGSU is really trying to play to one of the strengths that we've noticed before in this roster. The ability to get kills through floors. We see Valkyrie, Pulse, Kaid to keep the hatches closed and really win out that vertical game. Bandrus is hurt, which can be a little bit of a pain for that, but he's got... Three C4s to work with on the defense. Two impacts have already gone out, but that's still a lot of explosives. Try taking some damage from down below. They just get absolutely shut down by Butters. Unfortunately, those nades and that vertical play with that sledgehammer is not going to be very valuable at all. And, well, they were trying to reinforce off that wall, and Butters was able to come back from above and get the revenge for try and even things out once again a minute 30 left on the clock a lot of damage has been done on both sides but obviously the damage well is getting even worse as coffee now is able to get another one things that looking like they could be going in favor of bgsu right now UCF has been doing a great job of finding counter kills. They're trading out for their players a lot, but especially at C4, there's just no playability around it. Two players upstairs, they couldn't do anything when Maui went down. It's the 2v4, but we've seen them do this before, Caleb in particular, and they've got some intel to be working off of, although IQ's not doing a ton for Java right now. Yeah, I'm mainly just worried about these... Getting some information on maybe some of the players below, particularly that Pulse with their scanner. But I think the Pulse knows it's an IQ, so they're trying to keep off that as much as they can and really mainly utilize the default cameras or just kind of wait out the attackers from pushing in. But drone coming in sight does get some in 
tell Caleb might just go ahead and drop right now. They know there might be someone there. Some shots are going through, and they do find so the legs of Enrock, but unfortunately, no kills do go out. The drop's going to happen. It's gonna, probably going to have to happen soon, as there's only 25 seconds left, and they're running out of time to really do much, and they can't really rotate. They won't have time to do so. Yeah, Javin Caleb took a little bit to hone in on what they need to be doing, and it is using this hatch to their advantage. Unfortunately, Enrock is going to find the kill right there. A head is visible for Javin. He's not going to quite find it. Even with his commando, he takes the kill right there. He's got to drop and reload, but Enrock is still waiting around the corner. It's something he knew about, but the time had just gone fully by the wayside, and when you're down players so much like that, a 2v4 time is not on your side. It is quite your enemy. We get a 4-2 half. Not the worst thing ever for Bowling Green State University and they do have their chance at attacking themselves now at least they are able to make sure that they aren't down 5-1 that's a situation that you never want to be in when it comes to losing a half being down 5-1 it obviously not the worst that can happen but there are certainly a lot better places to be in and they're gonna go ahead and call a timeout i'm not entirely sure if i agree with this timeout we did just switch sides they did just win around so momentum's in their favor but, you know, it was a little bit scrappy. They did only win one site out of the... I'm not sure. If they didn't go to all of them, but out of the ones that they went to, they only won bathroom. Oh, yeah. It's not a great situation to be in. But again, they're on attack now. So it's... I would prefer... I would have preferred anything that's how to be called last round. But in any case... Better late than never, I suppose. Yeah, I guess you do also get some time as the round swap. There is some uh, game side uh, causes for the game to slow down a little bit as we swap sides. But I don't. I think the real thing is it's a mentality timeout where you come off this going forward to you just got to talk for a second. Get everyone on the same page because they're not losing right now by any stretch of the word. They're up a map. It is 1-0 on the actual official score count. You just have to make sure we're all on the same page. We're winning this map. It just takes the next five rounds in a row. It's not that much siege to have to play to get out of here with a really comfortable victory. And even if this one doesn't go our way, you got to make sure that mental is going to be feeling good and keeping on at least not a downward trend as we go into a third map, if that's to be the case. That is definitely a fair reason to take the time out. Mental game is one of the most important things you have, especially at this level of play where, you know, maybe the drive isn't as, you know, competitive at, say, you know, SI, for example, that just happened, where it's like, even if you get boomed a little bit, the want to win it is so much greater because there's so much more on the line. This, ultimately, there isn't too, too much, but still, these players, they are here for a reason. They want to make sure that they can win, and a nice reminder of that is always helpful helpful but at the same time and there are those downsides i mentioned as well with taking that timeout does give time for ucf to also talk things out so you know varies depending on what exactly how you look at it if it's worth it or not but clearly bgsu do think it is worth using it there and with it gone now their attacking out's going to be underway and they're going to attack the very first bomb site the ucf are going to choose to go which unsurprisingly is going to be armory all right uh caleb Spawn peeking with the MP5. I guess not really spawn peeking, but keeping this really heavy forward angle, you know that the attacker's going to be moving up here. It's uh, That window is really important as... Uh, the window right next to where he was watching is really important for getting uh, closed off angles over towards Fountain for uh, an attack on that side. So he knows that at least some people were going this way. Shield spotted out in the hallway. This is going to be a nice boon on information to have for UCF, and they do confirm that Caleb is still playing out in open area. being done on to Bandrew and they are going to get picked off. Unfortunately, the Intos isn't there. They it. didn't do the greatest job of actually droning out security, it seems. And they got pressure from the side as well. I do like this extension over into server and just putting this pressure, making it even more difficult for the players on this side of BGSU to really push in here. And they're suffering greatly for it. Ahi as well is going to be doing a little bit of a flank as we're seeing right now now although no one's really down here and in the meantime is going to be maui that gets another kill this time on the shaggy that's going to be a triple for them as they pick off butters as things are looking very desperate for bds or bgs you excuse me as well another shot's going to be coming up from maui unfortunately they're not going to pick up the kill but a ton of damage and mahi coming up the stairs finally getting something done this round they pick up the player and they're able to secure this round very dominantly and with an amazing start to the defensive side Yep, they're picking it right back up where they left off. 
Round six went the way of Bowling Green State University, but UCF, they want to get right back into the winning seat. 5-2, they're getting close to match point. They're heading back to bathroom. We've seen quite a bit of bathroom and tellers already from the other side's defense, and we'll see how UCF's shakes up comparatively. We've seen a lot of bathroom being played. I think this might be because of the fact that we did see in you know the most recent SI tournament, a lot of bathroom was played, and they kind of showed some strategies, and these teams may have adapted to it, or these teams just might have an affinity for bathroom. You know, no, no judgments there, but typically, most often, you do see workshop and server being played. Oh, for bathroom. Bathroom typically being tertiary, as I mentioned previously. But we are seeing an operator that I was surprised we didn't see last time when we actually went to bathroom. That's going to be the Frost. The Frost, very powerful. That window in the corner of Tellers can be very, very dangerous. And there's two other windows as well that you can put them under, as well as the top floor. You can put yeah, the flat. Frost mats under. There's a lot of places you can put them, and it means that no matter where you are as an attacker, you always have to check and make sure that there's absolutely nothing that you get caught in. And, well, that, of course, just makes things more difficult for the players that are attacking to push in because they're always having checked for Frost mat, and that means that they can sometimes just get shot in the butt if they're not paying attention. So, again, very much like Frost on this map. What do you think BGSU needs to do at this point in order to get back into that driver's seat and find maybe a streak of their own to win, maybe bring this one back to an even count, especially as we reach closer to that six-round score margin? Oh, we did only see, we've only seen one attacking round from them so far. So if it was defense, you know, I have a, I have a laundry list, like I said, because I saw their full defensive half, and I already gave some of those. But when it comes to attack, we only saw that last round. That last round was interesting in that it felt like that they just didn't drone a whole lot, which we've seen, they seem to be making that adaptation. They seem to be droning a little bit more. But in the same token, it seems like a lot of face checking is happening, which is good in some scenarios but it can be really bad in other scenarios where sometimes you just don't win those gunfights and you get caught off guard and like players like maui they felt like they were just running over the players they were just swinging everyone and they didn't really have the intel exactly where they were and it kind of cost them a little bit but so far they have been able to seemingly make those adaptations run a little bit more and it's paid off with two picks early on Maui over here has a big kill count. He's got a lot of deaths too. Really playing heavily as uh, like almost an entry fragger on defense. He's really forcing a lot of fights, just like you were saying, a lot of face checking, feeling like he's uh, running over. I know you were talking about face checking on the offense, but he's uh, really forcing them into a lot of those spots where they just have to take a fight with them. His teammates aren't able to keep up with it right now, though. Java really out of position, outside of sight. He's going to have to deal with Castle Barricades to even get back into objective. He's just pinned in a corner. Yeah, that doesn't take long for Butters to find him from here. Try is up above objective too. So he's going to have to go for some sort of retake or take a hatch in order to get down himself. Yeah, this is looking pretty dire. BGS, you seem to have found it. Looks like we are going to have the diffuser going down and try being left in a 1v4. Some shots are going off. Not the greatest gun in the world to be trying to do a clutch with. And with very little time left remaining, yep, Enrock shooting through the wall gets a headshot kill. And with that, the attackers are able to win another round. I mentioned how I was starting to see the adaptation coming out from UCF, or excuse me, BGSU, that they needed to drone a little bit more on this attacking half. And they made that adaptation within a round. Amazing work from them. They made sure that they had all the intel. There was absolutely no surprises happening from any of the players on the side of BGSC or UCF, excuse me, and take that one pretty handedly. And now the question is, are they going to be able to take that round win and continue it to be able to catch up and potentially go even further? Or if that was just a flash in the pan and if the adaptations coming out now from UCF are going to be able to okay, shut down to any chance that BGSU have of coming back here at this point. Lots of intel for the defense here between Valkyrie and Pulse, and we're seeing that reappearance of Frost as well. Now we're going to ventilation, an objective that we haven't seen a whole ton of between these two teams. Yeah, again, which is very surprising to me because this is a bomb site that is very, very powerful. The rushes that can come in and in pushing into server are certainly there and are possible to do. But at the same token, you have operators like the Frost, 
like the pulse, that can give you that intel, and that can also make sh it difficult for the rush to happen if you're playing those cross angles. And, well, I'd be curious to see if they do decide to go for that rush again. It doesn't look like they're going to be doing so. Instead, doing a, a backside take, we see them quickly pushing the tellers. And Osa being brought as well, another operator that, again, I am someone that thinks they need to be brought for the right situations. If they go for a bathroom take and get the back wall open, that is definitely one. I can see there being a lot of value with the Osa. Ooh, yep, Ying going out, flashing out our main entrance. Coffee is going to get the trade kill, but Java still is watching the hallway, so he gets two actually for the cost of his teammate. But this backside push is starting to pay off. Butters running through three speed, really running and gunning, bringing it down to the 3-3. Three, three. He's got to watch back upstairs, though, because there's quite a lot of potential for a collapse back behind him. And actually technically down a player for actual characters holding guns right now as shaggy is down vgsu is going to have to ooh, find themselves and rock a beautiful kill has the opportunity to set up their shield now as their teammates are going to get rest he's got to play slow as he waits for his teammates to come back to him Shots coming in from above, trying to find a pick. They don't have too much information to go off of unless there are those black guys in sight. It doesn't look like there are going to be too much, though. There might be some. We do see them playing on them pretty heavily, and the diffuser is going to go down. Some shots are going out here, and it is going to be kills going across the board. Down to a 1v2 right now is all up to try, I believe, playing on that top we're hearing the pings go out they are able to get one and the diffuser hasn't gone down just yet those black eyes are making quick work in the top floor they're picking exactly where they are they you know have the intel they've gone to a safe position where they can't shoot and they are going to be watching the actual drop itself a bit of a quality dip there i'm not entirely sure what's going on as we do see the dip down into sight they do end up shooting the deployable and then they vault over to try to rotate around and the intel is there now and rock they're going to be playing the diffuser surely try has the information on where it's going to be happening but they have no diffuser mm. to really stop it they don't really know where they are and try swings with the intel and gets a very nice pre-fire kill winning that round for the defensive team and pulling things up again and, and making sure the defenders are going to be taking this one all the way and Rock opened up so much for the team, kind of stranded there on site for a little while as teammates kind of had to make their way back and as a couple ended up dying. But there was a huge opportunity to keep the defuse going down. He knew that his opponent in the 1v1 is going to take a long time to rotate around. So it's actually a really good spot to plant. Uh, interestingly, like the one time so far in this match that I've seen anything that felt like a misplay in a post-plant scenario. Like, both teams have been really clean in these situations, and Enrock just gave so many opportunities for his opponent to find his location. He was totally hidden down there, even with cams given away until once things got going, he was actually obfuscated by the central pillar in uh, security. UCF being on match point, not a position that BGSU want to be in. They do have a map up, and this isn't their map pick. So if they lose it, it's not going to be too unexpected. But considering how close BGSU's map pick was and how dominant UCF are looking right now, it does make me a little bit concerned about the potential future of BGSU going into the decider map if it does end up getting there. The potential still there for them to win out this map. It's not over yet, but they would have to win over time or they want to get us to over time and we'll have to see if bringing a monty along with a capiton and glass is the strategy they want to use it looks like they're kind of just going for a lot of sight removal with smokes with the flashes from the ying and the glass as well just kind of making everything come together in the end and well i will say this is an interesting idea i don't know if it's the right one necessarily for bgsu to win this one out yeah, the thing is, these are very one-directional, uh, very focused gadgets uh, and operators. Oh my god, no the situation. Way. No, no way. okay, the melee's finally gonna shut down Maui. He gets one kill out of it, so it's a full trade. <laughs> Basically, just what we've been seeing from Maui, but he was so, so close to a triple kill and just totally neutering the round and the map. Instead, things are gonna go on more the same pitch as they were before, but that glass overwatch to make sure that plant can go down is gonna happen, and the defenders are pretty darn aware now that the Monty's coming out and that that's what BGSU is looking for. So a one-dimensional take like that is definitely not going to work. Now, Enrock running uh, out. Java, actually, is the one running out. Gets taken out by Enrock's Claymore, and that sets the precedent once again that this is feeling a lot better for the attackers. 
Coffee going down. There's a lot of the oversight for plants. And yeah, Bandrews is feeling he's not so safe to push and try and get the diffuser down. And Rock is the only player with an active rifle to be bearing to bear. Some very disgusting picks coming out there as well. And then, oh, the trade in terms of downing happened. Then this try ends up going down as well as the Monty, but now it's Mahi who's there. And Rock takes a lot of damage. The confirmation is there, and Mahi is able to pick it up as well. And that's going to be the round going to UCF. Now we are 1 1 in terms of actual maps, but that was a way more dominant win in terms of the actual map than it was for BGSU that had to win a 1v3 1v clutch to actually take their own map. Definitely a scary situation for BGSU to be in. Not impossible, but certainly one that is going to be interesting. And we're going to be all eyes on BGSU to make sure they can take this and finally get their first win in terms of a game series on the board. Yep, so we'll be back. We see this nice advantage in favor of UCF right now, especially in momentum. But Skyscraper could go anyone's way. We'll be back with it in just a few minutes.
Again, we're continuing where we left off. Bowling Green State University versus the UCF Knights. Week three of NECC Champions Division. So these two are really looking to really settle into where they'll be for most of this season since we're getting close to that halfway mark where everyone is really stratified out. So far, we've had a nail biter game one on Oregon border. A lot more favored for UCF. So Skyscraper, that seems like a nice place for our breaker, right, Power? I certainly agree. Skyscraper is one of my favorite maps at any level of play, whether that be the trenches of quick play all the way up to the very top of pro league, just because of how interesting it can be and how many varied ways of attacking that there is available to you and just how scrappy things can get as well. It feels like it always comes down to not necessarily who has the better setups or it comes down to whose gunplay is better. And those are always kind of fun maps or it feels like a little bit deathmatchy from parts of it, but it can also be very reliant on how well you use your utility and how well your setup is and allows you to get into those fighting positions. And well, if there wasn't a better map, I wouldn't want to go into it. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's really about those uh, little close quarters corridors that lead up to some of the more played objectives. While there's some pretty wide open areas that a lot of like roamers end up fighting in, when we get to the execute, everything is up close and personal. That's our third time seeing Jackal banned. So uh, for all of you Jackal lovers who are wanting to see him, uh, this is just not your match. I think Jackal get banned. Osa getting banned on Skyscraper is one that you don't see all too often. Again, she's not really an operator that works on every single map. She can work really well on some maps that have outside walls where you can get set up really easily without having to be worried about getting caught into a corner. And that is a case on Skyscraper on one of the sites in particular. Um, so the ban coming out is, you know, like I can see it, but I don't think that best use of the bands when it comes to the defender bands azami solace both operators that newly came out and have been very very strong in the meta for the defenders i'm not too surprised to see them get banned either they're played a lot less map as well yeah solace much more uh readily used by uh, Butters and Coffee weren't the ones really showing it, so UCF pretty rightly choosing to ban out Solace because they've seen that Bowling Green State University is pretty favored towards her and will use her pretty effectively. That has a lot of impact on some of these outside um, balcony areas and windows where you could actually find attackers before they even come in. If you're going towards Geisha Room, looking to open up those walls or even on the main balcony over by T Room. This is a map where you can play very, very aggressively jumping out windows. It's a map where claymores get a lot of usage and potentially a lot of kills if the players on the side of the defenders aren't really paying attention. And one of the operators that allows you to very easily shut down those claymores is of course going to be uh, that Solus. And with her off the board, that will mean they have to be a little bit more careful when it actually comes to pushing in. But of course, as we are going to be heading into this round proper and getting this underway, I want to focus more, instead of the defenders lineup and what they're doing, I want to focus more on what the attackers are bringing to the, to the table. Because attackers are BGSU and they are the ones who are going to be focused on them the most because they're the ones that are arguably in the most precarious situation and it's going to be a sense and a blackbeard that they're choosing to bring very interesting operator lineup at least in my opinion yeah not very common to see uh but they make more sense in tandem with each other being able to blind fire through an area that's going to be mutually smoked actually could give you that advantage because a straight bullet to the head just doesn't have the same ramifications for you as your opponents defense was looking to get pretty aggressive to start off with we saw maui using the default cameras to try and find opportunities for a spawn peak nothing ended up going his way but he did get some crucial intel to be working with smoke grenades already going off and ying candelas as well the full suite of blind utility but try doesn't really care just gonna take the head off of coffee and move on about caleb goes down 
to uh, whew, gunfire across the way, and things are really heating up. Butters finds that 3k, a 4k now as he takes out Maui as well, and he's looking for Mahi now deep in sight, having catapulted his way in here. Everything's still pretty opened up. The defenders were looking to keep some reinforcements until a little bit later. Mahi taking damage now across with this fight with Shaggy, and the peak is going to go in Mahi's way. He's got this hole right here. He's going to have to crawl through in order to get his way back to sight and try to find Shaggy once again. 1v1 left on the board. So far, neither player has really spotted each other. They have a general idea as to where they might be each other, but the Diffuser now has to go down. The pings are coming out, though the intel has been received for Mahi, and we are going to see the Diffuser actually get stuck. Pros don't fake, and the swing comes out. Shaggy knows exactly where they are, and the kill does come through. The attackers managed to win that one out, although it certainly was a bit messy towards the end there, but thankfully, all you need to do is have someone fly in to side with a shotgun and just start cleaning everyone up. Hey, sometimes it works. You can't really argue with that. And Butters has been on fire tonight, so a great round to really showcase what he can do. Uh, once again, up close and personal, making the most out of shotguns and SMGs there. We're going to go back to karaoke and tea room. I don't think that was a bad defense. I'm on their side with this. UCF, I think they got a good head on their shoulders to be heading back. The same thing won't happen again, and I know they won't let it. We're bringing Frost here. Uh, that's going to really shut down some of that overly aggressive play, and I think BGSU knows better than to try it again anyways. Once again, another Blackbeard coming out here. Blackbeard is an off that, you know, is a little bit, a little, a little bit dishonest. I'm not, I'm not the biggest fan of seeing the Blackbeard on the board, but you know, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do, especially when you're BG SU. You haven't won. You're 0 and 2, and you're on match points, on, or well, I guess map point. I suppose we are in the third map choice. You gotta pull out all the stocks to be able to win. So we're seeing a Monty, we're seeing a Blackbeard, we're seeing everything that they are gonna be able to try and do to win this out. You know, I can I can respect the hustle. I you know I, I might not be the most honorable play out there, but like I said, you gotta do what you gotta do. I loved the Valkyrie camps. They did so much to add value to UCF last round. Gonna continue making an appearance. I imagine we'll see Java on her a lot. She's pretty strong on this map. Can actually watch a lot of rooms at once with some of the longer corridors in between objectives. Try having seen all those smokes and flashes gone out last round. He knows that he's going to be a pretty pivotal player on Ward. And we're kind of having some flashbacks to map one on Oregon where every round we had blinding amounts of candles. Yeah, Candelas are not exactly the greatest thing to go up against unless you have a Warden on the board, which is, again, why we are seeing that being brought out here. But no Ying. There was a Ying last round, of course, but no, no one this round. They're just going to more so have to just, you know, deal with any flashes that might come out or seeing the smoke of the Monty that they do bring on the board. Actually, no flashes, which is a bit, a bit surprising. It feels like you always have at least some flash, particularly to burn ADSs or to burn all my discs. You get rid of shields. It's just something that's so valuable to have. And they just have to, have to instead use the smoke canisters if they do decide to as well. But they could just decide just to instead have the Monty just kind of push up to the shield and just kind of, you know, get a little bit too close, a little, little bit uncomfortable. They see a shield there. Where they see one of the Blackbird shields they're going to be taking some shots at. It doesn't end up breaking it, but they are now going to have to back up here and you know, playing a little bit more of a passive position and a bit more dangerous one at that yeah it can be kind of risky he's playing he's got the opportunity if the monty pushes up too far that he'll be able to ooh, shoot him in the back which could be really pivotal but he might get stuck in this corner he's got the drop as the potential monty is moving up and my he gets the kill yeah banjo's fully off of the board and caleb is going to move up as well the line of scrimmage has moved pretty drastically as the montagna has been lost there we go butters acting on the intel he's been given gonna take out a default cam while we're at it as well and he's gonna rotate back in to try and get back into a relevant spot now and to those three speeds, you can very quickly get to an advantageous position and very quickly get back to where the main push is coming from. That Monty being gone, though, is potentially huge. And as well, Enrock playing on that Blackbeard has no more face shields to be able to stop those headshots from coming through. Their gadgets completely gone. Now they're just stuck with a mediocre gun at best to try to make things work. And Maui is feeling themselves on that Frost once again. We saw how powerful they were in that one round. Speaking of Frost, inside that Frost, 
then try to get the other kill just to make it ever so dangerous and oop, there we go they just kind of collapse it, it is really funny when someone gets caught in a frost mat and then, and then they bleed out because they're in a frost mat it's, it, it's kind of like just give up yeah, it's <laughs> yep. a little goofy at least in my opinion <laughs> it's yeah it is a truly goofy gadget uh we finally get to see one actually have that impact not just downing but actually confirming a kill as the round ends a pretty impactful one uh we gotta see our defender come up and take out butters from the exact spot that he killed uh shoot who was it before was it java on one my last round no it wouldn't have been shoot uh was it was it was it, was it, was it, was it butter no. Was it Mahi was, getting the kill was, and then Maui coming up and uh, kind of getting that justice for him, killing off Butters in the end? Yeah, I think it was, I think it was Mahi, and then Maui was playing someone. Maui was playing Frost, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah. That, that's it. Yeah. There we go. We'll piece together what happened ten seconds ago. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no. It, either way, an amazing round there from UCF to be able to stop that going down and now it looks like the BGSU they're like and eh, no more dishonest plays no more Monty no more Blackbeard we're not gonna bother with that not getting too much value out of the Blackbeard anyway so we're just gonna go ahead and head right over to a more standard compositional lineup the RC that think have come out as well which can be a powerful operator we did see a little bit last map not the ton of value out of them but it, you know at least some healing that was able to provide a little bit of value to the attacking players and they did decide to push in but UCF now they're going to be the ones that we're looking at here to try and stop this push from coming in in particular those roamers are playing down below as well as the one playing on the stairs those are going to be the ones that are going to try to make things a little bit more difficult and also Oryx playing all over by Geisha there's a little bit of pressure coming in on this side as well the drone does spot them though they can obviously really quickly leave as they are playing at Oryx and that's exactly what you're bringing him for. Yeah, seeing a flashbang indicator too is pretty good for him. That's how Trine knows that he has wasted utility just by being in the area. They're drawing him for him pretty heavily though, so he better not back on in. Instead, he's just running right through Coffee's line of sight where Coffee was anyway. So he'll take that bonus kill and continue on his way. The UCF defense is pretty spread, but they're relying on their vast bulk of utility on site to keep Mahi safe in there. And Mahi's got his own gun skill to help with that as well. 5v4 now orcs did stall for a little bit of time not as much as you would have liked and they would have liked to live but still time stalled nonetheless and well now they do know where the main push is coming from they can rotate over and try to put some pressure onto that side although they are going to back up a little bit as they are getting a little bit too much space for maui to feel comfortable well, with Caleb, though, does have a pretty decent aim. Well, always sitting back in, as well as that mute that's playing behind that minibar, can put a bit more pressure as well. And Coffee, who can be playing down below, is going to be activating those beepers and is going to give away their position. But the player that was playing on those stairs does rotate back up. And now, UCF are in a very bunkery position, kind of giving up a lot of control on the north side of the map and allowing them to really just push in through Shrine. And then BGSU, they're really just kind of getting into all these different angles, trying to pressure them out and maybe kill anyone playing down below. Seeing Coffee doing a nice little clear right now by themselves. No one down there to really pressure them, so it's just a bit of time wasted, unfortunately, but still good to clear them out. But things are going to have to start picking up soon as we're down to 40 seconds. Java hasn't been able to get much participation playing on the stairs all the way through this. Yeah, and then he absolutely was shifted into the most pivotal position. He ends up dying there. Oh my god, Maui coming out on Dragon, getting two downs. Uh, the res, though, is going to come out saving one. He gets a kill and is traded out. He made a great play, making sure that he was further out of drum room earlier. Allowed him to make that play now he's up close with a shotgun c4 could even come around oh his movement has just been enough noise to bait out an attacker that doesn't get shot out mahi gets the kill on enrock coffee gets down on the other side caleb doing well for himself and mahi makes that re-peak to finish things up in the end it is going to be the defend there's playing that bunker in sight that are going to be able to stop the attack coming in from BGSU and UCF. They take the lead for the first time, two in a row. It seems like that every single map we have BGSU winning the first one and then UCF just win a few in a row. At last time, it was they won a lot in a row. But before it was on, on the first map, it was only three in a row and they ended up equalizing towards the end. Now, is it going to happen again? Who knows? But UCF starting things out for things to go very, very similarly. And this time, we're going to be heading down to Bedroom, where we are seeing a Mozzie being brought on the board, which is an operator that I feel like 
might need a little bit of help because while yes it can be very powerful with the drone the same the same token i feel like that they're too easy to counter sometimes and there's not enough of them to really put that much pressure you can put them on some doors and they can sometimes be a little bit of a nuisance but that's about it and i feel like that the interesting seeing them being brought in if it was next season with a new operator brava it'd make a lot more sense but I mean, it's not yet so uh, maybe maybe it's just like a comfort pick or maybe they have a strat bolt around it particularly if they get some drones in this but a bit too early to tell obviously yeah here's the thing i'm not seeing him bring in a lot more to the table right now that you wouldn't be getting from mute and my shown us he's quite astute on smg 11 so he's gonna be playing that position anyways he's bunkered up in sight around the shield that alibi has brought another more interesting pick giving away some intel so it's some intel game that ucf is playing bandrews getting picked right off the bat is actually pretty huge we've seen blitz be vastly impactful in the rounds that teams have chosen to bring him this one bandrews doesn't get lucky on though yeah, Bandrews going down the blitz. Their entire strategy, it kind of seems like was hinged around that operator. Now they're going to be down. And then also as well, Caleb is able to catch Butters off guard playing down below, trying to throw those grenades. And then unfortunately isn't able to have Then BG2 taking a lot of damage very early on. It looks like we're going to be seeing very similarly to what happened in the previous rounds, more back-to-back -back wins for these teams. And we see, like I said, that another round one going down caleb getting another one as well the coffee just kind of walking into that line of sight now it's all down to end rock and shaggy with one kill between the both of them they're in a very precarious situation now and they're just having to try and see if they can push up take this top floor and then get some pressure down below they're both pressuring this one window and there's not too much anyone can really do about it kind of just forced to sit here and just kind of wait some shots are going you know onto end rock now damaging them but not even a lick of damage being done to any of the players on UCF. Absolutely insane. Nice. Yeah, Javi even ran out to get all that damage, leaving Shaggy just absolutely crippled. And these peak fights, they do not go your way if you're already tagged with some damage. They're pretty much stuck here, blowing an E1D just to prevent runouts while they try to get up to the door, but Caleb unfazed. He finds his third kill on the round, and he's able to head back in. He doesn't even really care what Enroc is doing. There's a minute left for him to work with, but it's literally a 1v5 the worst position to be in he's got one e one d left so yeah i think he's just chilling uh which is fair given the situation uh not every round goes your way and may as well save the kills uh, you know he doesn't even have any information in there to work with there's actually more cameras for the defenders with valkyrie and default cams and alibis on just about all the windows he could be wanting oh he baits out a kill Ooh. with the sound of his repel going in these are all going to be pretty much impactless unless he makes the hero play um so yeah just waiting here around the corner he'll bait as long as he can but try ends up getting on the second try he puts enough rounds down the range eventually some impactful ones land there another round for the ucf knights really finding their spot on the defense on skyscraper in the end the flawless round didn't go through so you know that is something to consider it was going to be flawless until the kill was gotten by them baiting on the repel and being flying on in but yeah like i like you said that's going to be three in a row they've guaranteed the half exactly the same way that they did in the previous map and in the map before now bgsu were able to bring it back once they switched sides they're able to tie up for two and then keep things going times the last map we saw them stall out and the first map we saw them actually take it since this is the decider they had some say as to what map was exactly picked we know, obviously we haven't really shown map bands in quite a bit but if we what when we looked at them we did see that that it wasn't exactly their choice between the final two maps but obviously as they were the ones who did go through and ban every single map with them they knew this was going to be left on the board they intentionally left on the board which means they have to be at least a little bit confident in it or this is a map they felt like that the enemy team was was also not very confident in and maybe they had a chance with that as well and again not all of it yet obviously map one did go in their favor in the very end but still starting things out uh, mahi are you, are you are you okay what is what is oh, oh that was a <laughs> uh, he's keeping the hands me, i'm sorry <laughs> It's true, yeah. <laughs> you ever get there, you finish with your, your setup for the site, and you go, I don't really have anything to do. Time to vibrate. Uh, I haven't vibrated per se, but I do get the kind of feel of like, yeah, I'm just gonna 
chair I would do just kind of vibe a little bit because I don't really know what else to do. Yeah, see, see, you're doing it. You're vibing. Ah, uh, I, I get it. Yep. <laughs> uh, it's funny. Oh. Okay, Heartbreach going out here around Try. Uh, he is this frontline defense. We've seen already that UCF is pretty willing to, yep, look for kills over here on this wall. They're reinforcing it because this is a big tax on utility and a bit of a tax on time. This is a great entrance site for the attack. It's really common as well. He's played his life pretty ambitiously right around this bar. He's given away his location too, and now he knows he's pinned because there's... Definitely going to be someone coming around that window. Yeah, pre-fire already, but no one's netted yet. He's just looking to waste as much time before his life is inevitably taken. Is that a they are playing you? a bit aggressively. It looks like they, yeah, no, they just completely yep. backed up. And Try finally does go down to Butters, who is sneaking up these stairs. But them going down, it will equalize things is it was Enroth that went down from a run out earlier. And, well, now they're going to try to take things even more in their favors we see shaggy getting a pickup on to maui this time then taking the mountain taking the man favor in or taking the man count in their favor that was Maui playing on the frost who typically <laughs> you know has been very comfortable Ooh. on that nine millimeter and a nice nade from below will remove that shield and force the lamai to go ahead and back up so far bgsu learning from their mistakes in the previous round doing a lot better job of actually taking this Wow, yeah, Butters, once again, uh, showing that affinity on the frags, takes out Mahi, another really high-impact character or player on the other team. Java getting aggressive here around the corner as MPX sings true when he shuts down Butters just as he was getting rolling. Two defenders to the three attackers, and the attackers did have a nice time getting themselves set up, but it's guerrilla tactics in this just elbow-length brawl between these two teams. Things quiet down, though, for just a moment. Just under 30 seconds left. 3 v 2. The defenders are not in the worst situation possible. So well, the final Flores drone does go out. And Coffee's going to swing. Although they cannot find Java who is able to pick them off. 2v2. Now Java scores their feet and they do get tagged. If now Cable, they do. Sorry, Caleb, they go down and now leave things in a 1v1. Java, last one left alive. The plant has to go down. They stop for just a second. They broke a different corner. But no. they see their foot and they are able to pick them up. Barely any time left remaining, but in the end, it is going to be the attackers who win that round. BGSU showed they're not going to have a fight, and they're looking to, for the first time in the series, trying to make this half even. Yeah, it's been all about these streaks. These teams have been streaking so constantly, so finally putting a stop to the momentum from UCF Knights. Going uh, now to exhibition and office instead of tea room they're kind of flirting with that option to head on back but they want to keep it another fresh pick especially after last round i mean uh bowling green was looking really comfortable through the initial phase of the attack they still take some trades ucf is so dark and i cannot uh wax this one on anymore they're so great at taking uh deaths and turning them into trades keeping numbers even even when like you wouldn't otherwise expect it so that's a testament to their ability to drone and play together which is just a treat to see as anytime you see a roster doing that. So back to this exhibition room. This is where we were able to see a lot of bunkering up, even if we didn't start with all the players there. It's these layers of fallback positions. And this is where Maui also is really standing out. Uh, while not getting a huge number of kills and he's not opening up every round, he's holding nice power positions and making sure he's part of that time wasting effort. We are going to be seeing a very similar defense and attack that we've seen in the previous rounds, at least in terms of operator lineup. It's going to be coming down to execution. How well can the Rome game stall things out for the attackers? How well can <laughs> Wrong the stop. defenders effectively take care of what is thrown at them now? And it looks like they're going to be trying to get open in this geisha wall before pushing in but very least some droning is going to come in as well i don't actually think that wall has been reinforced so i don't entirely know if it's going to be worth it for them to even bother getting that wall open without any you know by using a thermite charge probably just use the impact from the zof but they are going to have to make oh, a little bit of lag they are going to have to worry about the castle barricades in particular kind of stalling things out this push but that doesn't mean they've taken Maui, someone who, you know, in the previous rounds has been a big gunner. And, you know, not the greatest in terms of scoreline. Does have five assists, which is an ungodly high number. They have yeah. more assists than they have anything else right now. And we'll mean that they are taken off of a particularly strong gunner and instead just mainly meant to focus on, you know, getting those castle barricades down and kind of playing a position for 
Yeah, he's playing off those castle barricades, and the thing is, Bandrews has been allocated to that side by Geisha, and it doesn't seem like they're under a lot of pressure from the defense anymore, so he might make short work of that and take away the defensive positions that are really important for UCF. Yep, there we go. Castle barricades already going down as BGSU takes great control over the west side. They've fully netted out all of the defenders there, and even taken out Maui, who uh, is taking this moment to probably reset. Maybe some sort of audio bug may have taken hold that he's just fixing there. So I'm sure he'll be back. If not, we have timeouts to work with. Yeah, we can always close things out. It is going to be the end of the half anyway, so perfectly capable of just, you know, pausing things down, you know, give us a bit of time to talk about the previous half, maybe what either team needs to do better. But still, the round still is underway for now. It hasn't been over yet. Bandit is going to be taking a little bit closer by picking Ooh. off tries. Some damage going in on both sides. Impact stuns as well. A nade coming out as well. Java's in a very precarious situation here. The stun does give away that they're playing close. They're going to go ahead and run back down the stairs. They will get picked off by Butters playing below, but the trades are still coming through. Anorok now, they do end up going down, leaving things in a 4v2. Make that 4v1 it is all down to Kayla playing with the Aid on site. The shots go through. They get one, but they need to get three more if they want to win this one. And unfortunately, they do not. Andrews closes things out. And with that, Half is going to be taken 3-3 for the very first time in this entire series. Yeah, pretty surprising to see and perfectly fitting of our map three. I think if we were to see it anywhere, it would be here on Skyscraper. So, yeah, we'll go on Tech Pause, make sure that we got Bandrews back in here. We can't be, or not, not Bandrews, uh, Maui? Yeah, Maui uh, back in here. Uh, can't be doing it without him, of course. Really interesting to see the score count at this point. Yeah, we need our Frost Extraordinaire back into this oh, game. Yeah. But uh, at least when it comes to the score line, it, it is, like, like you said, it's curious how we've had four twos across the board. And then now we're seeing BGSU actually being able to take it. Granted, there's been some rounds that they have looked not the greatest, and there have been some rounds where it's been kind of close. That last round in particular was a very dominant win for them now is that maybe because the fact that they were all kind of like you know a little bit uh, because one of their players had disconnect maybe that can be the case you know sometimes players get a little bit less competitive when they have a player leave even if they already had died but still it can't be stated that they did not put up an effort they did try they get some kills and bgsu were able to thoroughly shut them down and now that they're going on to their defensive side it might be a situation where it could be the case, at least, that this is where they're going to start to find their footing. But I get the feeling this is going to be just another back and forth. That they're probably going to have another 7-7 seven, seven split in overtime. It's going to come down to something very, very close. But there is the opportunity that one of these teams is a lot more comfortable on the attacking half or the defensive half. And they could run away with it. But again, I doubt it from what we've seen so far. See, I'm trying to do a little bit of math here. See what the... Defensive versus attacking win rates are looking for, like for these teams. Well, we've got the second to reflect. We're going to T room. Maybe I'll have a little bit more on that in a second once I've crunched them a little better. But we got T room and karaoke as our starting objective. No surprises there. Much more conventional lineup from UCF. Java's finally been allowed to take that Dakebi uh, pick, which has been banned on our other two maps. Another off pick, or not off pick, but one that we haven't seen tonight is Bandrews on Ella. So looking to hold up a close corner. We're probably going to be seeing him in karaoke room repping that FO12 in a nearly unattackable position. We are also seeing another Sens being brought out here, which is very interesting. Thing. Again, a couple of operas we've seen a little bit of, but not a ton of. Well, again, okay. aside from aside from the Dokabi, we haven't seen at all because she was banned. But I'm very curious as to if the Sens is going to work out very well. Because here's the thing is that it's like Sens is very good at doing one thing, one thing in particular, and that is making, is that cutting off sight lines. But we also do have players like Enrock who are playing on that lesion, who have those impacts, and those impacts can very easily shut down Sens by just basically saying, hey, you know, all these little projectors you have on the floor, yeah, well, they're gone now because I impacted them. Oops, sorry. And then you try to push in, 
or you do, you're then forced to use another one and then they impact it again and then you do have more impacts or you have less impacts than they have gadgets obviously but still it's wasting a lot that you might want to use later on for a different position because of the fact that you can just impact them and it feels like the sends is in a spot where he can be good but eh, I, don't, I just i don't feel like it happens all too often i feel like it's too situational to really get too much out of it yeah, it's uh, one of these operator additions that has been met with uh, not a huge impact, surprisingly, to the meta at all. Unfortunately, we won't get to see that opportunity for shaking things up from try dying out uh, side of objective. Yep, Yin Candle is coming out. Does Caleb actually find a kill right there? That's disgusting of an angle. Yeah, Shaggy's going to find something to shoot back a second pick off of the attackers he's trapped in this corner and despite having put down ads's none of it is doing anything to help everything is just unvisible invisible smoke everywhere flashes just keep coming kills putting the plant down i don't know if he's got audio cues to work off of from his current position but trying to move up shaggy just can't do it Caleb's already got the diffuser down already got his gun pointed at the doorway ready to go oh my god what a disgusting flick on there too Jeez, I'm. That's a definitely a powerful statement to start out saying. We, we you just took that last round in pretty dominant fashion. Well, guess what? We're going to just completely walk over you. They did get some picks. You know, it wasn't all just UCF just kind of walking and sh shooting them. Obviously, with that. <laughs> uh, excuse, oh, excuse me, Ying, to make things even easier, but. Certainly wasn't the great situation for them to be in. I was expecting, honestly, to see a Warden adaptation, but no, not going to bother bringing it in. Instead, we're going to be seeing a more Frosting Battle and a Mira, who's been banned the last two maps, and now is finally left on the board. And, well, if there was any site to do it, it would be this one, as while it's a bit dangerous to play behind that shield, so close to someone being able to kind of watch you from that window at the same time, it does put a lot of pressure if the breach does get opened. And, well, with the way the DC has been playing, the wall is almost certainly going to get open. And so I'm not too worried about that in the slightest happening for them. It also means they do get, you know, another mirror window that can watch here inside of this terrace and kind of pressure or put some worrying faces on anyone who's pushing it over from drum. I like this adaptation. I like seeing them brought out. The question is, is how UCF are going to be able to counter it. Just going to walk in again. Maybe some naked from below from like Try, for example. That'd be a pretty good way of taking care of it. That stuff does kind of worry me. It turns um, exhibition room into a bit of a firing zone all the way from uh, just outside of drum room. That's a long line of sight to open up. It's going to make it really hard for UCF to rotate between objectives once the going gets going and we get deeper in the round and their sight angles are more clamped down by UCF. And UCF's been doing a great job of holding some cross angles. Uh, so... Coming back to uh, the the pre this half stats, uh, UCF was at a dead even nine wins on attack and nine wins on defense for this entire matchup. But now they're going on to attack, so they had their whole defensive half to work with, which means their attacks have been much more statistically effective. That's where they're getting a lot more of their wins against BGSU, and I think that last round was a great testament to what they look to be doing when they're given a chance to go back on attack right now. Once again, we're seeing uh, some uh, vertical play with from below with Sledge. I haven't actually seen that before. That's, in, that's very interesting. We haven't seen that happen yet, so I probably just be saying once again, but just whatever I was going to say was oh, a lot more important. Maui! Whoa! Hold on, buddy. You need to stop cooking. Oh, my. Yes, yeah, so someone stop him. Yes, yeah, <laughs> someone stop well, his cooking. Yeah, well, you, why would we let him cook? Oh, my lord. Oh, jeez. He is lucky to be alive there. That 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 uh, three-speed nerf down to one speed there, or it's two speed nerf down to one speed there for Sledge. Saving Maui's life there, and he potentially could live to fight another day, but definitely gonna have to take things a little bit more slow for them at least. Yeah, you know, now that ever since they took frags away from Buck, like you just gotta do what you gotta do. If it's vertical play from below with Sledge, I will take it sometimes. <laughs> oh, trade coming out right here. Uh, not quite a literal trade. Um, oh, yeah, let's go ahead and punch that out. It's no longer working to our advantage. The attackers uh, have great sight lines into objective, so we don't want to let them stop that attack back onto site for the defenders. 
Caleb playing the shield from a little bit of a distance as he tries to root out defenders across the way. Ooh, there's some shots going out there from Caleb and also from Mahi, just completely shutting down the any left of the of remaining defenders. Mahi as well getting the final pickoff there. Killing that Kai that was playing right behind the minibar. Not a whole lot that could be done in the end. The attackers just completely taking it to the defenders, showing that they don't care about that mirror setup. They they don't care about, you know, making a few mistakes here or there. They're just going to walk all over you. And that's what they do so effectively. And BGSU, they call their timeout now. They've had that waiting in pocket. And we've seen timeouts have been somewhat effective for these teams maybe not as effective as they would have liked them to be of course but they have shown that it can at the very least give some value and potentially spark some life back into these teams and bgsu they're looking for their first win if ucf win this you know it's another win on the board 3-0 you know we keep the streak going but bgsu they need this they need to start thinking about this they lose three in a row odds of them qualifying and decrease more and more so they are wanting to make sure they can get this it's timeouts but they're going to need to do it looking at these kill lines it's wild to see over on ucf 11 kills on two players not just mahi that entry fragger that we've seen just doing so much uh maybe doing a little less entry fragger if he's going to be going montani on this round but caleb that hard support player that we've seen just keep showing up for the team time and time again he got a full ace for his team to win out the round he's carried a couple on his back by getting that diffuser down and making the clutch happen through heck and high water and he's just fragging out of his mind especially on that defensive half that we just saw and now we're going to be heading over to the west side of the map instead holding this bomb site and if they win this one which oftentimes this site at least in my experience typically does end up going to defenders but in the monte here i feel like they're probably just going to try to have them push in from the out from the door that's over in the north corner and just kind of walk in from the balcony and then start trying to put some pressure onto the players in sight maybe try to clear someone who's playing a shield if there is anyone playing a shield over on that side but uh, i'm not entirely sure if that's going to work out all too well we do have two c4s on the side of bgsu as well as we do have those goyo canisters that can either slow things down or take a little feetsies of monty so not exactly the at least in my opinion best play to be going for here but it doesn't really matter if players like try on the nook for example or if players like uh, caleb just kind of walk in and shoot everyone like they've been doing the past couple of rounds yeah, that's what Mahi's really looking to uh, support right here. I mean, he has kind of switched over role to literally being a support. So he's uh, going to give them this intel to push him up. Yeah, making quick ground here. Maui already opening up a great sight line. I'm not even sure where those Habana pellets... Uh, do they allow a sight line from the back of that room? Um, maybe. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure either. I'm sure we'll see it in a little bit. We'll see an angle being taken from it now. But in the meantime, we're more trying to focus on the shield getting taken down. We do have Jaeger playing behind it. We are seeing a lot of stuns being thrown out as well. The shield finally does get removed. They are able to force them out. Smoke being thrown in return as well as a C4 trying to pressure out that Monty. A lot, half the HP of the Monty gone are going to paint it. There is a little bit more utility still there. Maui opening things up by getting that kill onto Enrock is absolutely huge. Means there is free reign for any smokes or flashes that are left live to still go through. And Maui opening up with another kill as well. Two for then the pings coming in from Mahi is absolutely huge. Giving them intel. The duo of Mahi and Maui just kind of walk in and shoot everyone with the intel. Yep, that's a perfect combination. Such great execution of the play. Yeah, Bandrus knows that it's going to be safe moving up here. He's contemplating a Goyo canister, but they've already used so much utility just to try and slow down that push. He's not going to have the opportunity anymore. It's now a live angle with that Hibana hole going on. I guess he does have opportunity, but he hasn't stopped the Monty. He hesitated, and that's going to cost him now. Maybe he can separate Monty from the rest of his team, but he's going to have to move over back to Coffee. The two of them can play off each other, but they have to retake sight. Time is in favor of the defenders. 
Though, with try nope. going down, that is potentially huge. Another kill on the board, man. Drew's getting that one onto Java now, and now it's going to be up to Caleb to try to plant the defuse. Is there no one with a gun currently active? Is one of the top fraggers, although Maui has shown they certainly have what it takes. Monty does end up pushing. Now they have to try to run through smoke, and it is not going to be able to have. And the shot in the back from Mahi is going to be able to get that kill. And with that, UCF Knights are able to win another one out this time with a very effective Monty strategy. And they take themselves all the way to match point. Once again, we could be seeing another 7 3 come out, which would be crazy if we had such a huge clutch to win that first map. And then it was just 7 3s across the board to take it all the way the rest of the way. Yeah, BGSU taking this one to map three against a team up to map differential or match differential on them currently. The 0-2 to 2-0 difference is where we start seeing things kind of settle in. So BGSU still really hoping to keep in this one and claw themselves out of a no law win streak that they're in right now. But things are looking ever more dire for them. UCF really tightening that chokehold. They had three in a row. They've got another three in a row. And every single round for BGSU is one for their match live so far. Mahi bringing up that Montano yet again. And Maui again on the sledge. The two of them made a deadly, deadly combination. Yeah, the dynamic duo. Well, we'll have to see if BGSU are able to come back and counter it once again. We are going to be seeing Ella, oh, Ella uh, ice cream cones coming out to try to maybe counter that Monty. This is why I assume it's coming out here as well. Or it technically is a Monty counter, although you're not going to see that happen too, too often. It is a little bit crazy if Monty gets absolutely thrown back by getting charged in too. But Andrews is putting those Ella mines a little bit far off site potentially. Actually, if the push coming in from that direction is possible, but it also could just be completely waste as well. Legion mines, which are going to be able to poke Monty in the feet. Not too much they can do about that, especially if they are pushing into sites and make potentially some really good damage being done. Especially if they are tagged by the nitro cells that are being brought up by Enrock and, and potentially more impacts that Shaggy does have left. You see, they one, so the potential is there for them to get so much value. And now they are pushing in here now. Try taking some. Shots, flashes going in. It seems like, at least for the moment, no player will go down. These defenders are going to be... Uh... Oh, no, no. They do still have opportunities for peeling on out. So using utility to try and oust them is going to be hurting UCF. They want those flashbangs to be able to clear out more utility later on. But they have brought plenty of throwables for themselves overall, so they can spare Ooh. a few. Maui picking up the first kill yet again. Bandrews isn't going to get to offsite anchor any longer and look at this disgusting chokehold maui's got right here he's gonna see that cross yep and butters is totally taken out of it they're gonna have to adapt that pretty darn fast the second floor is all but taken coffee though could potentially get a decent flank going as they are going to be down here in delivery rotating over into the pantry potentially pushing up is there and rock as well is about to get a face full of blindness but they do manage to shoot caleb and take them out, bringing things to a 3v4. But still, Enrock taking a ton of damage. They're gonna have to drop down the hatch. They do indeed, but that means they give up top four control almost entirely. Not too much they can do to really put any more pressure on there. Now it's gonna have to hold into the positions and just try to make sure that, well, the players decide to be just who can't really push into sight and can't get anything done. Obviously, we don't have the Monty on the board. Any more, so all of these operators that have to counter that Monty aren't gonna get too much value but the swing from coffee is huge i'm not sure if they had the intel or not but in any case they do manage to try bringing things to 3v3 player above putting a lot of credit to on trying to see if they can get some shots into the floor unfortunately neither player does end up connecting as oh i say God. that though maui does end up picking one and a 3v2 ucf they're poised to win this one that's a second 3k in a round for Maui, and he's still up looking for Coffee and Shaggy. He's got the location, he's got pings to work off of, not gonna quite land the headshots just around the corner, and Coffee's still playing it, the pre-fire gets him, that's the quad kill for Maui. He's looking for Shaggy now, whose location has been given away as he's just trying to keep up. Mahi is the one who finishes it off in the end, not leaving all the kills to Maui on this one. He's done shielding on up, and our final player alone in sight goes down UCF. 3-0 so far in NECC competition. Overall, just going into this, if you had looked at, you know, the scoreline, it was an 0-2 coming in from 
uh, BGSU, and then a two will coming in from UCF Knights. This scoreline isn't too surprising, honestly, but the game was certainly an enjoyable one. It felt close, even if, even though it was 7-3, two of those rounds. That first map on Oregon was an absolute banger in particular, that clutch at the very end to win things out that could have very easily have gone a 2-0 we would not have even seen skyscraper but in the end it doesn't really matter even though that is going to be our score line in the end that could be better map differential which in the end could matter for being able to squeak in especially as bgs you are now down 0-3 which is a very precarious situation to be in still it is going to be ucf knights that do take the win although they did have to fight for it bgsu did not go down without a fight Yep, not making it easy for them. Bowling Green State University is still plenty in it. We're not even to that halfway mark of this season. So they have got the opportunity to keep working with this one and try and find their spot into playoffs. UCF, though, looking to be a power player in the Champions Division. But that will bring us to the conclusion of what we've got for you guys tonight here on the A stream. So thanks for joining along with us. I've been Treasure. I've been joined by Power of the Storm. Uh, we'll see you next week. Bye.